So guys, in this 30 days when you are preparing for geography, as you are aware, maximum you get some 6 to 8 questions from geography point of view. But including environment and ecology, it will reach 20 to 25. So what is more important for us is focusing on those areas where you get questions. If you want like, you know, right from the beginning climatology till Indian geography, we can go through. But that is like teaching you everything once again. But let us focus on the areas from where questions will come. Fine. And in this two days, we will try to cover all those areas and I will tell certain words that you need to focus on to answer the questions. So in that, the first most important thing, see, you know, map based questions will be there, right? And when I say map based, there are two types. One is India map based. Second one is world map based. World map based is purely on the basis of current affairs, especially with respect to international relations, right? So whatever is there or whatever is happening in the world, same issues will be asked, but something around it will be asked. For example, Taliban issue. So when there was Taliban capturing Afghanistan, we know it was a very important news. But what was the question? Which countries border Afghanistan? Right. When ISIS was there, when ISIS was attacking people in Syria, Syrians were moving to countries around Mediterranean Sea. So question was like, you know, which countries are part of Mediterranean Sea or which countries has border with Mediterranean Sea? Two years they asked that question. Third year they asked what is Levant? Right? Levant basically means the countries which has border with Mediterranean Sea. So I'm just trying to say there are certain things that we need to focus. So first, that's why I asked you to bring maps so that first all the map based things, including India, we will try to check. So in that, you might have heard something about Vostok exercise, Vladi Vostok exercise, right? Where is Vostok? Russia, can you open Asia map? Asia map? Can you see Japan? Can you see Japan? Above Japan, do you have Kurile Islands? Everyone, Kurile Islands, yeah. Kurile Islands are disputed between Japan and Russia. Fine. Which islands are disputed, they may ask you. Kurile Islands are disputed between Russia and Japan. Do you have Sea of Japan there? Can you all check beside Japan, do you have Sea of Japan? Beside Sea of Japan, Asia map, map. Beside Sea of Japan, do you have Vladivostok? Asia physic Asia political map, you check mark. Not in that. Back, back. Yeah. So guys, can you see? Which is the place? Vladivostok. Okay, where is Vladivostok? Siberia. Remember that. Oil fields are there in this region, guys. Vladivostok, oil field is there. Closer to Vladivostok, can you also look for Sakhalin Islands? Sakhalin Islands. Do you have? Yeah. Guys, Sakhalin Islands has oil. ONGC Videsh Limited, OVL, is given authority to extract oil from this region. Sakhalin Islands, right? The word is very important. Where is Sakhalin Islands? They may ask you. Fine. Now, what happened in Vladivostok? There were two exercises. Guys. One was military exercise. Another one was naval exercise. 
India participated in military exercise. India did not participate in naval exercise. The reason for this is naval exercise occurred in Sea of Japan. Fine. Can you see three seas will be there if you check that region. Three seas are there. One is Sea of Japan. Above that do you have Sea of Akostak? Yes. Third, can you see Bering Strait? Bering Strait. Can you see three parts? Yes. See? Sea of Japan, Sea of Akostak, Bering Strait. These are the three places where you have naval exercises. Fine? Bearing straight above. Yes? Now, what is it that we are trying to see here? India did not participate in the naval exercise because that region is disputed between Russia and Japan. India decided not to enter into that. But India sent army. India sent army to the Vladivostok. But India didn't send navy. So, if they ask you a question, it can be like Vostok exercise. India participated in both naval and army exercise. Is that true? No. India participated only in army exercise. Why not naval exercise? Disputed. So, what is the second question? Which region is disputed? Kuril Islands is disputed. Fine. Kuril Islands is disputed. Good. Next. See guys. 2013, Obama told, we are going to focus on Asia-Pacific region. So, when USSR was the most powerful country, Europe was the focus. 2013 onwards, Obama tried to focus on Asia-Pacific. Every year, one question in prelims, one question in mains is from Asia-Pacific region. Asia Pacific means South China Sea and East China Sea. Fine. Asia Pacific means South China Sea and East China Sea. Now what is East China Sea? Can you all check East China Sea there? Do you have South Korea there? Everyone? Do you have South Korea having border with East China Sea? See China first. Eastern side of China you see. Yeah, in Atlas you would have marked everything. So at the end you don't know what is important, what is not important. Right? So you have East China Sea. Do you have South Korea? Do you have Japan? Do you have China? Do you have Taiwan? There's four countries. Everyone? Which are the four? China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. These four has border with East China Sea. Fine. So, what is the dispute? If I say this is China and if this is my South Korea, this is Japan and here you have Taiwan. Yes, in this region there are few islands called as Senkaku Islands or Duyu Islands. Last year question was, right, Senkaku Islands is disputed in which sea or between which two countries. Fine. I'm, as I am telling you, this is always important. Now you see, what China says is, Senkaku belongs to me. Taiwan says Senkaku belongs to me. Japan says it belongs to me. When everyone says it belongs to them, what is this line? This line is called as ADIZ. Air Defense Identification Zone. Fine. Air Defense Identification Zone. 
So the question can be ADIZ is disputed in which sea? Sea of Japan, East China Sea, South China Sea, Indian Ocean. East China Sea. Do you understand? So ADIZ is disputed in East China Sea. Fine. Which is the island which is disputed? Senkaku or Duyu. In between which two countries? Japan and China. Taiwan is part of China. India considers China like Taiwan as part. So always disputes when they ask you they will give China and Japan. And there is another small rock called as Sakotra rock. Sakotra rock. It is disputed between China and South Korea. Sakotra. You won't find them in the map. Don't worry. Fine. So two things. Guys. One is Senkaku. Another one is Sakotra. ADIZ is the problem. Fine. So now what is ADIZ? Air Defense Identification Zone. Fine. Now what exactly do we understand by ADIZ? Have you heard something about exclusive economic zone? Territorial waters? Yes. So the entire dispute is about this. Yes, can you tell me if this is my mean sea level? This is my mean sea level. This is my high tide level. This is my low tide level. In between high tide and low tide. Anywhere you can draw an imaginary line called as what? Baseline. See, 2013 question was explain maritime zones in mains. They asked for 12 and a half marks. Last year in prelims, they asked about this. You should have clarity because if anyone asks you, explain me, East China Sea dispute, the story starts with this. So, you should have clarity over this. So, where do you have a baseline? Can you tell? In between which two? High tide line and low tide line. Okay. Now, let me say I considered this as my baseline. So, what is this called as this? The area in between baseline and coastline. This is my coast. What is this called as? This is called as internal waters. What is internal waters? Area in between baseline and coastline is called as what? Internal waters. Next, how much is territorial water? 12 nautical miles from the baseline. How much? 12 nautical miles from the baseline is my territorial water. So what can be permitted and what cannot be permitted in territorial waters? Okay, I'll ask you, can anyone enter into territorial waters without permission? No. Can aircrafts fly? Unless, see permission is required even for ships to come. So the meaning is can anyone fly basically means without permission. Okay, you on, only can only for passage. Okay, so let me say like this. Land is there. Indian land is there. Can a foreigner, can a Pakistani come into Indian land just for passage, peaceful purpose? 
क्या ने पाकिस्तानी गई कम पीस फॉर पीसफुल पर्पस नो वाई सी रिमेंबर टेरिटोरियल वॉटर्स बेसिकली मीन्स इट इज सिमिलर टू अवर लैंड इट इज टेरिटरी इट इज माइन नो वन कैन कम विदउट परमिशन बट समाइम्स वॉट हैपन्स वेन दे कम राइट सो लेट से दे लॉस सिग्नल एंड द शिप लॉस्ट समथिंग दे एंटर बिकॉज वेर एवर लैंड इज विजिबल दे एंटर अवर शिप ऑल्सो लेट से वी आर नियर आफ्रीका शिप लॉस्ट कंट्रोल इट विल गो वेर एवर इट इज देर एट दैट टाइम आई शुड शो वाइट फ्लैग एंड एंटर until i came because of this reason i will go if you show me the path that is called innocent passage innocent passage it is not like you know free movement so permission is required innocent passage basically means without knowing that it is territorial waters if anyone enters it is permitted we don't arrest them we don't put them behind bars fine but white flag is mandatory submarines or anything if it is there they can also come without knowing but they have to show white flag until i didn't come to fight this is only for this purpose so remember guys air also no one can come air is also mine water is mine that's why we use the term territorial waters fine when us us uh, drone entered into iran's territorial waters iran blasted it right recently you might have heard chinese balloon was moving us blasted it right so anywhere anywhere remember in the territorial waters whether it is sea or air permission is not given clear so remember air defense identification zone what is the meaning of this what is it let me assume that this is india fine now from here i have taken 12 nautical miles as my territorial waters can anyone enter into this without my permission no so what i would do in this i will keep sensors radars and the radars will be detecting so if any flight enters right as soon as the flight enters the radar is detected and send a signal who are you they have to communicate back if they don't communicate back we will send our aircrafts we will make them to come down right so this is called as air defense identification zone pakistan border is there radcliffe line is the border so exactly along the radcliffe line we have adiz india has six adiz india has six adiz one with pakistan border one with chinese border one with bangladesh border like this we have six adiz and guys can you tell me what is the full form of adiz now air, air defense identification zone it extends till which one territorial waters this can be the question right and actually what is the meaning they tell adiz extends beyond territorial waters statement is correct they not just exactly here little bit ahead also they try to control so if they ask you consider the following statements with respect to adiz fine first is it is about air navigation or sea navigation what is it about air navigation we are talking about air defense second it is till territorial waters and sometimes may be extended so if they give you it is only till territorial waters it is wrong it can be extended fine it can be extended third any passage into adiz without permission is not allowed innocent passage anywhere is allowed fine innocent passage anywhere is allowed this is territorial waters but sometimes what happens countries are given additionally 12 nautical miles 
as what? What is it? What is contiguous zone? What is permitted in contiguous zone and what is not permitted? Natural resources, that is economy is permitted. Anything? Defense, okay. Others, others, who are permitted, who are not permitted. Can anyone enter into contiguous zone? Without permission, can they enter? Yes, see only territorial waters restriction is there but what is contiguous zone i'll tell you contiguous zone is like if anyone is there in the contiguous zone i can go and ask them who you are show me the documents limited rights will be there for the country in contiguous zone so what is contiguous zone 24 nautical miles from the baseline or 12 nautical miles from the territorial waters. What is permitted in this? Passage is permitted, but the host country will have limited rights. Limited right means show documents. Where are you going? Why are you here? It's like, you know, you have a shop. If someone enters into your shop, it is called as territorial waters. Let's say you have a house, gate is there, door is there, right? Door is territory. Little bit space will be there, gate will be there. Gate is territorial waters. In front of gate, if someone is standing for one hour, can you go and ask who are you, what are you doing here? He will tell it's road, my wish, I will stand. But you can call police and tell someone is watching me regularly. Right, police will also tell, don't stand here, go there. Limited powers will be there. You can't go and hit him until don't come. Anyone can move there. But if someone is standing there for long, you can definitely ask them who you are, what you are. Let's say in the road, someone is sleeping. Can you go stop it? That is your, what is it? 200 nautical miles, we call it as what? Exclusive economic zone. Fine? So guys. What is exclusive economic zone? What is the meaning of exclusive economic zone? What is permitted? What is not permitted? Huh. Can someone come and extract oil in this region? Can someone come and do fishing in this region? No. For economic purposes, 200 nautical miles completely belongs to me. If this is India, for economic purposes, 200 nautical miles completely belongs to me. That is called as what? Exclusive economic zone. I'll just give in polity terms. 12 nautical miles is called as territorial sovereignty. Territorial sovereignty means everything is mine. Air, land, water, resources, everything is mine. 200 nautical miles is called as what? Economic sovereignty, no one can take resources except me. I have complete rights over this. Now you tell me, exclusive economic zone is still 200 nautical miles only. I'll ask another way. Territorial waters is only till 12 nautical miles. Always don't go by only. Okay, see. Geography, economy, geography, economy, only are always wrong. Why? Maybe is possibility. I'll give a uh, like, you know, thing, coral reefs, coral reefs normally live in 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. It requires high temperature. That means tropical temperature is required. Everyone agrees? Yes. So now you tell. Coral reefs are present only in tropical seas. No. In New Zealand and Norway, Sweden, single species of corals are present. So life always has exception. Geography always have exception. So only is not permitted. Polity is written by us. 
So when we write something, what we do? Only. We are biased. We always try to say only these are allowed. Nature is not biased. Nature has something. So in polity, should, must, may be correct. In geography, should, must, always wrong. Always wrong. Extreme statements always wrong. Numbers. As soon as you see number, that statement is wrong. Don't use your brain much. Sometimes when you use brain, that's the problem. UPSC, like you know, troubles you because of that. Extreme statements. See guys, 40 to 50 questions because of your preparation you will solve. Remember, like you know, because you have prepared for one year, you will clear 40 to 50 questions. 20 to 30 questions you will solve because of your MCQ practice, not because of your knowledge. You give, I will give you another one year, same situation will be there, doesn't change. We are teaching from like you know 10 years, if you give us question paper immediately, right, then we all sit, all faculties will be given, I will be, I'll be getting geography questions, someone will be getting polity questions, all faculties divide questions. We will keep Google in front, books in front. We take three hours to come to conclusion what is correct and what is not correct. Right. You people in examination hall, reading all the subjects, remembering all the subjects, answering everything is not possible. So what is important is 30 questions purely depends upon these tricks. Geography, 99% number is there. They will do some mistake. Some mistake here and there, they will do that. You can say wrong, must, should and all. Be careful, solve them. Don't solve MCQs to know how well you have prepared. Stop that. Start solving MCQs to know, I have not heard this question at all. But I read the statements. I feel these are extreme. I will eliminate them and I will choose this. You may ask, sir, nowadays they are asking one pair, two pair, three pair and all. It doesn't work. See, that doesn't work for anyone. If it doesn't work for you, no one knows. For one year, if you have studied, everyone has studied. If you have not studied, they also have not studied. They will be also taking risk. Right? That will be hardly 68 questions. Fine? So, in this territorial waters, is this, tell me, is this man-made or natural? So man-made only is a possibility. Territorial waters is only till 12 nautical miles, correct. But what happened when it comes to exclusive economic zone, right? What is this called as, tell me geographically. From here till here, what is it called as? Continental shelf. This is what? Continental slope. Guys, in Russia, if I take this region, 1260 kilometers is there. Continental shelf in Siberia is how much? 1260. Remember this, Russia has the longest continental shelf. Chile has the least continental shelf. Fine. Russia has the longest, Chile has the least. Now, in Russia, oil is there in this region. As Russia has oil in this region, Russia says, this belongs to me. Entire continental shelf belongs to me. So, Russia told, exclusive economic zone can be 200 nautical miles, but it can be exclusive economic zone is equal to continental shelf or 200 nautical miles, whichever is bigger. I will tell the meaning of this. Uh, let us say, like you know, Tamil Nadu, right? Tamil Nadu region, 
exclusive economic zone that is continental shelf is 150 nautical miles. So, India is given how much? 200. They tell 150 is less than 200. So, you take 200. But near West Bengal, there is 330 nautical miles. Which one? Continental shelf. So, what UNCLOS has told? India, you can take 330 nautical miles in West Bengal. So, what is the meaning of this, guys? You tell me. When continental shelf is equal to 100 nautical miles, when continental shelf is 500 nautical miles, can you tell how much will be exclusive economic zone in this case and exclusive economic zone in this case? First case, how much will I get? 200 nautical miles. Second case, how much will I get? 500 nautical miles. So, now you tell me, exclusive economic zone is always 200 nautical miles. No. It depends upon what? Continental shelf. Fine? Okay. Can you tell what is it beyond 200 nautical miles or exclusive economic zone? What is it called as? High seas is under whom? Huh. Is there any organization which takes care of this? UNCLOS is the law. Law of the sea. UNCLOS is the law of the sea. Body? Yes. What is it? ISBA. C2021 question paper. ISBA was the question. Fine. This is in news. So, you will definitely get. Why are they asking these questions? Any idea? Why are they asking these questions? Okay, one is South China Sea dispute. I will come to South China Sea. Artificial islands. Anything beyond this? Last year, two things happened. This US naval ship entered into our exclusive economic zone without permission it entered it is allowed but naval ship is not allowed much that was one issue second india has been given permission to extract polymetallic nodules from south indian ocean right who gave us the permission isba that's why the question came. Now comes third year. Again, the things are continuing. What is polymetallic nodules? What are polymetallic nodules? What do you understand by polymetallic nodules? Have you heard? Huh. What are they? I'll give you options. You try. Terrigenous deposits. Cosmogeneous deposits, hydrogenous deposits. What is it? Biogenous deposits. What is it? Do you understand? All this is basic things based on the current affairs. If you just go backwards, these are all the points that come. But is this clear? Did you understand this? I will come to that. I will talk about ocean deposits. Fine, yes. Just one last time. What is the baseline? Where will you draw a baseline? In between high tide or low tide. And what is internal waters? Area in between baseline and coastline. How much is territorial waters? 12 nautical miles. How much is Contiguous zone 24 nautical miles from baseline or 12 nautical miles from territorial waters. How much is exclusive economic zone? 200 nautical miles or continental shelf. Fine. Beyond, you see now, beyond 200 nautical miles is high seas or beyond exclusive economic zone is high seas. 
बियॉन्ड एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन वाई एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन कैन बी टू हंड्रेड और ग्रेटर देन टू हंड्रेड आल्सो लैंग्वेज इज द वन विच दे प्ले सी गेस इफ आई गिव यू टू मेक क्वेश्चन फाइन how upsc frames questions understand because in this last few days that plays a very important role if someone is making a question they don't think of the question i won't sit and dream which question i should give they will take the book authenticated source they will take they will read they will give from that while giving they will modify so same statement will be there they will add not only these words they play so for you the biggest difficulty is i have seen this statement where i have seen no clarity you see lakshmi kan what is the problem for you in polity perfect i know this definitely i know this but you don't know whether it is in president chapter or prime minister chapter because you have read it right the problem is you know it that's where they play they don't make questions out of the box if they ask you which country has border with mediterranean sea right they won't ask you india in the option they know india is not there they will ask moldova has border with mediterranean or not so there we get doubt correct so they won't ask you question which is far away which is closer that is mindset so when you are revising now till now you might have revised by closing the books in this 30 days when you revise open your eyes and then see the reason is if you see what you should do in the exam you tell me do you need to recollect or do you need to feel i have seen this feeling is enough no need of recollecting when feeling is enough you should have that concept in school days you see how you used to prepare right by heart everything multiple times go to examination hall when you are writing you can recollect the page also <laughs> right and if you miss a word do you recollect if you miss a word you leave gap there <laughs> and write the invigilator will get to know that he forgot this word you will what you used to do you used to go back and revise everything poem was there you have to by heart the poem forgot one word right from the beginning again come it has to be in the flow so guys that is important for prelims that clarity is important yes i have seen what i have seen every page every page you spend time see now you have understood the time is over now it is about seeing so when you are looking at these aspects right isba is trying to control high seas now with respect to, to east china sea we observed ad iz correct this ad iz was with respect to east china sea which are the two islands disputed senkaku islands sakotra rock sakotra rock is in between south korea and china now come to south china sea guys everyone can you check south china sea yes yeah yes in that south china sea can you all check first which countries has border with south china sea everyone china has border with south china sea yes taiwan has border venezuela sorry vietnam has border yes then can you see malaysia has border yes can you also check in like brunei has border yes philippines has border yes okay what is the dispute in this region guys what is it called as Nine dash line. Nine dash line is disputed in South China Sea. 
and which are the islands they are disputed in this region? Parcel Islands, Spratly Islands, Parcel Spratly, Scarborough, Scarborough Shoals. This they will give you which of the following islands are disputed in South China Sea. Parasal, Spratle, Scarborough Shoal, Senkaku Islands. Senkaku comes in which one? East China Sea. That clarity is important. Fine. Nine dashed line is claimed by which country? China. Fine. Claimed by China. And then, this US has made first island chain strategy in the region. US has first island chain strategy in the region and this was made to counter USSR and China which were communist countries at that time. Right? But nowadays they are again in news. Because they want to counter who? China now. What is it called as? First Island Chain Strategy. I will just tell the countries, look at it. Can you all check Kuril Islands? Everyone top above Japan, can you see Kuril Islands? Below Kuril Islands, do you have Japan? Below Japan, do you have Taiwan? Below Taiwan, do you have uh, like you know, Philippines? And then can you come to Vietnam? Yes, right. So that circle from Kuril Islands, if you draw a line, Kuril Islands to Japan, Japan to Taiwan, Taiwan to Philippines, Philippines to Vietnam. That is called as first island chain strategy of whom? US. Taiwan, Taiwan is at the center. Taiwan is at the center. Now everyone, do you understand one main thing? Recently there was Taiwan issue in news. Yes, Nancy Pelosi of US came to Taiwan and Chinese came closer to that. There was about to be a war. At that time these statements came. Taiwan is at the center of first island chain strategy of US. Okay, now you tell me nine dashed line is of whom? China. First island chain strategy is of whom? US. Fine. There is second island chain also. There is second island chain also. That second island chain starts from Japan. Starts from Japan. Have you heard about Mariana Islands? Mariana Trench. Beside Mariana Trench, you will find Mariana Islands also. Philippines, you see? Eastern side of Philippines, you see, do you have some islands there? Yes, eastern side of Philippines, do you have some islands? Yes, actually in that part, second island chain will be there. Don't worry about that. This year, what is more important? First island chain. And guys, first island chain demarcates boundary. What does it demarcate? It demarcates boundary of Sea of Japan. Can you see? It demarcates boundary of Sea of Japan. It demarcates boundary of East China Sea. It demarcates boundary of South China Sea. Fine? 
it is a strategy to prevent spread of ussr at that time not required just basic this ir basic is enough first island chain strategy that's it which is the center taiwan and what separates taiwan from mainland china is taiwan strait yes remember this what separates china from taiwan taiwan strait fine good so you got this then guys there is something called as INSTC International North South Transport Corridor at least from last 6 years it is in news not even once question has been asked fine but this year for the first time one containment came from russia till chabar port and from chabar port it came to india that means it has started working the moment it starts working question will be asked always remember questions are not asked when plan is made questions are asked when it starts working now what is instc which countries are part of instc yes can you tell from where to where are we planning instc russia to india okay can you all see in the asia map one route one route from russia can you see beside caspian sea there is something called as azerbaijan can you all check azerbaijan yes yeah russia to azerbaijan can you come from there can you come to iran yes in iran can you see two things one is bandar abbas can you see that is the major port of iran guys bandar abbas but that is very busy port so india has got chabar port right from there till mumbai can you come yes can you tell the four country names once which are the four russia then what do you have azerbaijan iran india fine this is called as international north south transport corridor land route ways land route there is sea route also there is sea route also okay can you all see mumbai beside that do you have arabian sea mumbai beside that do you have arabian sea beside that do you have like you know uh, persian gulf yes another type another side do you have red sea everyone if we cross red sea do we enter into mediterranean sea yes now you open europe map yes hmm can you all check mediterranean sea in europe map mediterranean sea how do you come out of mediterranean sea can you see below spain do you have strait of gibraltar yes spain spain and which country morocco yes once you come out then can you see below uk do you have english channel everyone do you have english channel yes from english channel if you pass do you come to north sea beside north sea do you have baltic sea then do you have russia yes so from where can you say russia 
from russia i come to baltic sea from baltic sea i come to north sea from north sea i pass through english channel from english channel we pass through strait of gibraltar we come to mediterranean sea from mediterranean sea we come to suez canal from suez canal we come to red sea do you recollect asia map come to asia map do you come to red sea after red sea do you come to arabian sea yes and then mumbai that is called as north south transport corridor what is it called as north south transport corridor one is sea route another one is land route this is to counter china pakistan economic corridor many say that instc is to counter china pakistan economic corridor this year it's very very important because of what it has started working it has started working that's why it's very very important next see guys russia ukraine is in news right but what are all the questions that can be expected of that two main important areas for us is black sea and ukraine fine black sea and ukraine first can you just open black sea europe map you see guys yes Astana. No, no. Ashgabad agreement. Are you talking? See, it it passes through INSTC Saint Petersburg. It starts from there. Azerbaijan, Iran, India. This is the plan. It is extended to other parts, but this is the core. Next, everyone. Okay. Can you all see Black Sea? Yes. Okay. Now. Does Russia has border with Black Sea? Yes. Ukraine. Ukraine. Yes. Georgia. Georgia has border with. Yes. Yeah. You see Black Sea first below. See Ukraine. Ukraine below below below. Europe, mom. Yes. Can you see Black Sea? Yes. Does Georgia has border? Russia has border. Ukraine has border. Yes. Romania. Yes. Bulgaria. Yes. Moldova. See, yes. Moldova is landlocked. Everyone. Turkey has border. Yes. Which other country has border? go round tell ones which all countries has border georgia russia ukraine romania bulgaria turkey moldova has moldova is landlocked now remember this this is this is already asked once already asked once when there was this issue that time only they asked moldova is landlocked they asked which among the following is landlocked at that time now you should have clarity definitely if if the question is given moldova will be one of the options it doesn't have border with black sea fine good next guys ukraine is important for us mainly because of two reasons one because of the war second our indian students came out from the neighboring countries correct where did we send our air air uh, airplanes neighboring countries we brought them from the neighboring countries so all the neighboring countries become important for us 
right so which countries has border with ukraine you see russia has border yes yeah everyone just see some places first some places first russia has border ukraine has border below ukraine do you all have crimea crimea in crimea do you have a place by name sevastopol yes that place is very very important guys right sevastopol that was given to russia for 72 years after the war they have taken it everything goes back to that particular place sevastopol then guys can you see ukraine eastern side of ukraine donetsk luhansk two places donetsk luhansk do you have good guys these two are occupied by russia donetsk and luhansk which side is it is it closer to russia yes these two are captured by russia fine then now you tell the countries which has border guys tell the countries which has border first which is the country russia second belarus yes belarus third poland fourth slovakia fifth hungary sixth which one romania anything more moldova does moldova has border with ukraine does it has border with black sea no fine one last time can you tell russia belarus poland slovakia hungary moldova and romania fine guys don't by heart all the seas this year this is important see them multiple times more than enough you will be able to get one is what countries around ukraine countries around black sea fine then this did you hear about nord stream pipeline where is it from where to where russia to germany with sea see there can you see russia to germany baltic sea is there yes remember this guys nord stream pipeline is in baltic sea see it is not about whether you know or you don't know it's about clarity last few days we have read everything we are just seeing it to ensure we are correct fine then yes now if you can just check like you know uh, north of asia map you see okay in europe map only i'll tell the countries you check once can you all check uk below that do you have france yes do you have italy germany russia okay five countries can you tell uk france germany italy russia fine five which are the five uk france germany italy russia okay open world map guys yes this i have already shown this but again once for your g20 summit fine in north america the three countries that you have canada us mexico can you see which are the three canada us mexico south america two brazil argentina can you all see brazil argentina africa at the bottom do you have south africa everyone 
साउथ अफ्रीका यूरोप कैन यू सी यूके फ्रांस जर्मनी इटली रशिया यस नॉर्थ अमेरिका विच आर द थ्री कैनेडा यूएस मेक्सिको साउथ अमेरिका ब्राजील अर्जेंटीना अफ्रीका साउथ अफ्रीका यूरोप यूके फ्रांस रशिया जर्मनी इटली फाइन एंड देन वेस्ट एशिया कैन यू सी टर्की एंड सऊदी अरेबिया टर्की एंड सऊदी अरेबिया यस साउथ एशिया इंडिया साउथ ईस्ट एशिया इंडोनेशिया यस ईस्ट एशिया चाइना साउथ कोरिया जापान एवरी वन ऑस्ट्रेलिया यस दिस इज नाइनटीन कंट्रीज प्लस यूरोपियन यूनियन इजी कैन वी सी वन नॉर्थ अमेरिका विच आर द थ्री Canada, US, Mexico, South America, Brazil, Argentina, Africa, South Africa, then Europe, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, West Asia, two countries, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, South Asia, India, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, East Asia, China, South Korea, Japan. and then which one you have australia european union 19 countries plus european union is g20 fine you know g20 is happening question will be there right see guys there are so many organizations in the world whichever organization happens in india very important interpol meeting happened in india definitely there can be a question Shanghai Cooperation Organization is going to be held in India. Definitely, there can be a question. G20 happening in India. Definitely, there can be a question. You should know everything. See Wikipedia. Like you know, go to proper website and check. Definitely, question will come first. When did it happen? Right? Where did it happen? Who are the countries which are part of it? All those are important. Fine. Never neglect if any organization has. in india like you know that is if it is in india definitely bricks was in india question was asked mekong ganga was in india question was asked bimstek was in india question was asked right question will be asked if it happens in india fine so now you see shanghai cooperation organization yes open asia map quickly yes can you check china ones everyone china ones yes then guys does china has border with tajikistan can you all see tajikistan does it has border with kyrgyzstan above that kazakhstan above that russia yes see ones china tajikistan kyrgyzstan kazakhstan russia it is called as shanghai five shanghai five uzbekistan joined to form shanghai cooperation organization fine uzbekistan joined to form what shanghai cooperation organization so they may ask you a question india joined to form sco wrong who joined uzbekistan joined to form shanghai cooperation organization then which two countries joined india pakistan joined which is the last country to join sco iran total how many countries are there nine countries so yes after this let us talk about reverses one question will be there from reverses 
normally one question is always there on reverse. So, if you just open Northeast India map, Barak River you see. Okay. Is yes, what is the difference between tributary and distributary? If a river joins another river, it is tributary. If a river splits into two, it is called as distributary. Fine. So remember, see this. Approximately fifty-one rivers. flow in between india and bangladesh from myanmar also if you take 54 rivers are there right so this number varies so when upsc gives you this number will be almost wrong they won't give 51 they may ask you 501 you will get to know acha this is wrong for sure but remember 51 54 will be correct you can't they won't give 51 52 53 like this they won't do that mistake they will make it 100% mistake fine so 51 rivers in this in 1996 we went for ganges water treaty there was only one river on which we had a treaty that is ganges water treaty in 1996 and remember this was only for 30 years fine that means by 2026 it is going to end second it tries to tell us how much water we need to distribute at farakka barrage do you have any idea where is farakka barrage okay have you heard ganga river splits into two one is hugli river another one is padma river ganga splits into two one is what hugli another one is padma padma is in bangladesh hugli is in west bengal correct the place where it splits is farakka there we have constructed a dam called as farakka barrage this is present in rajmahal hills ganga river is important because of two reasons first time ganga cruise do you recollect from where to where it went not till sadhya dibrugad went till dibrugad okay how did it go how did it go path is see guys you are an ias officer who is going to tell the path you are not going to tell from where to where you have to tell how it went correct right when you go to prime minister you will tell prime minister will tell i want to go from varanasi to dibrugad you will tell fine sir this river you take you go like this you pass through this river which are the rivers first is what varanasi which river will be there ganga river it comes passes through that there is another possibility guys remember they can ask you ganga river passes through which cities this year there is that possibility when a cruise goes they would have stopped question will be asked on the basis of that ganga river passes through which cities fine agra ganga river passes yamuna delhi so how clarity where yamuna passes where ganga passes first first thing is ganga river it came till farakka barrage passed through padma the cruise went to bangladesh and then it went to brahmaputra 
what is brahmaputra called in bangladesh jamuna so i'll show you this is my hoogli this is padma this is my brahmaputra this is jamuna once padma and jamuna joins it forms meghana you are not reading all the rivers you are reading only few rivers at least those rivers you should have clarity fine so now the ship started from here went to bangladesh this is called as national waterway 1 it went to bangladesh went backwards entered into brahmaputra which is national waterway 2 so national waterway 1 is from where to where prayagraj to haldia national waterway 2 sadia to dubri are you all understanding so questions can be on waterways first please try to recollect six waterways we have i'll give you that we will read them six waterways question can be there this year why cruise has gone right prime minister is telling it's important if you don't prepare then you will feel acha i knew this question pattern you know identify important issues go to the basics read them completely waterways this year is very very important one second we are talking about this rivers correct so splitting and all can be asked right uh, which barrage for a which hills rajamahal. where is rajamahal hills bihar or jharkhand bihar or jharkhand remember bihar is plain jharkhand is peninsular plateau when states were divided plateau went to jharkhand planes came to bihar fine ganga river flows through how many states ganga river flows through how many states when we say ganga river never say only ganga no one will ask you kaveri means only kaveri okay if i say kaveri river is disputed between which states what will you tell karnataka tamil nadu kerala puducherry why tributaries are also there so when i say ganga river don't say only the main river you also have to consider tributaries are you getting the point so is there a possibility you tell me can they ask how many states it pass through why ganga river is important yes can i say cities they may ask you through which of the following cities they will pass through cruise went yes you can only predict questions after writing exam someone will come and tell this was asked because of this you will tell i know this next attempt i will improve right so now you just work on them fine this in ganga don't by heart tributaries tributaries are not very important yes if when you are reading see them what is more important places because every place cruise stopped cruise stopped at every place that's why it is very very important for us next it is ganges water treaty between india and bangladesh how many years 
30 years. When was it signed? 1996. When is it going to end? 2026. And what have we agreed? At Farakka barrage, whatever water will come, that will be sent to Bangladesh, that will come to India. It will be distributed between India and Bangladesh. Then guys, second river which is important for us in between India and Bangladesh was Feni River. Fine. Feni River is a tributary between or sorry is a river in between Tripura and Bangladesh. Feni River is in between which two? Tripura and Bangladesh. And is this river's biggest problem is it keeps shifting. It keeps shifting. So what happens if it shifts? You see this is Tripura. If I say once it will flow like this, once it will flow like this. When it flows like this, this region belongs to Bangladesh. When it flows like this, this region belongs to whom? India. Illegal migrants enter whenever river shifts the course. All the people will be waiting here. As the river shifts, we, they tell, see river is that side, we are this side. We are part of you. Many illegal migration happens because whenever the river flows, remember these are all not what you call as uh, perennial rivers. These are seasonal rivers based on rain. Whenever the river water increases, people will come to do festivals. When they come to do some festival, they enter into India. Illegal migration happens. Tripura is given permission to extract water from Feni River. Bangladesh has given permission to India to extract water from Feni River. Fine, that has helped huge land. So just remember Feni River is in between which two states? Tripura and Bangladesh. Second, we have what we call as Kushiara. Yes? We have something called as Barak River. Barak River originates in Manipur. Has originates where? Manipur. Barak River splits into two. One is Kushiara. Second one is Surma. That's why we call it distributary. Please remember in the exam they may change distributary to tributary. You should be careful. Distributary, tributary. Then guys, Kushiara, can you tell me, is border between which state of India and Bangladesh? So it is border between Assam and Bangladesh. Good. Can you tell me Barak is tributary of Meghana or is it Brahmaputra? So, Barak is tributary of Meghana. When India proposed National Waterway 6 on Barak River, prelims question was Barak is tributary of Ganga, right? Brahmaputra, Meghana. What is it tributary of? Meghana. Fine. This is second major agreement between India and Bangladesh after Ganges Water Treaty. That's why Ganges Water Treaty is also important.
Clear? Next is, as you are all aware, India is planning to change things with respect to Indus Water Treaty. Correct? So, first, Zaskar, Kabul, Sutlej, Bias. Fine. Among this, among this, how many rivers or which rivers flow into Indus directly? The so question is simple. Which rivers flow into Indus directly? Sutlej flows into Indus directly? Yes. Bias? Okay. Kabul? Zaskar? See, Indus doesn't mean Indus, like you know, Chinab, Jhelum, Ravi, Bias, Sutlej. There are others also. Indus is a system of many which we need to have clarity. Fine. First, open India map. Don't think every time same question will be repeated. Multiple languages they can ask same things. First, where does the river originate? Is? Indus river. Where? Manasarovar. Where is Manasarovar? Tibet. Yes. From Tibet, Manasarovar, does the river flow towards India? Everyone? Yes. When it is flowing towards India, which are the two mountains through which Indus river flows? Can you see Ladakh and Zaskar? Physical map of Jammu Kashmir, you see? Do you have Ladakh and Zaskar? Yes. Everyone from where to where is it flowing? Can you tell? Manasarovar. Lad in between which two mountains? Ladakh and Zaskar. Can you tell the direction? In NCRTs, they give you direction as well. What is the direction? From where to where it is flowing? You have Atlas with you, also so many doubts are there. Tell me. From where is it starting? Southeast to northwest. Is it flowing like this? Is this the direction? So don't think, don't think, how can it go north? It is on the basis of slope. So, today what is important is which direction, that's it. From where to where? Southeast to northwest. Fine? Okay. Now, when it is going through this, can you see two rivers? Shyok. S-H-Y-O-K. Shyok. Yes? Second, can you also see Zaskar? Zaskar river, Shok river. If you are not able to see it in India map, can you see Jammu Kashmir map separately? Everyone? Yeah. What is it guys? Can you tell? Which are the two rivers joining? Shok, Zaskar. Can you tell which is joining which side? Right side and left side if I take. Shok is which side? Right side. Zaskar is which side? So this river is flowing like this. One is coming and joining here. Another one is coming and joining here. This is my Shok. This is my Zaskar. Can you tell now which is right bank tributary, which is left bank tributary? 
शोक इज राइट बैंक जस्कर इज लेफ्ट बैंक फाइन इज इज टू आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डायरेक्टली दे विल आस्क यू विच इज राइट बैंक विच इज लेफ्ट बैंक फाइन नेक्स्ट इज शोक हैव यू हर्ड सियाचिन ग्लेशियर विच रिवर ओरिजिन नीड्स इन सियाचिन ग्लेशियर In C R T gives you clearly. What is that? Nubra River. You might have heard of a question. Where is Siachen Glacier? Northern side of Nubra River. Yes. Siachen Glacier. Which river originates? Nubra River. Fine. Shiok originates where? Beside, beside Siachen Glacier, you have Remo Glacier. Can you see? Beside Siachen Glacier, Remo Glacier. Did you see Siachen? Everyone? Yes. Guys, as of now, just remember this much. Two. That's it. Which are the two? Shiok is which side? Right. Zaskar is which side? Left. Okay. Then, guys, can you tell? Can you tell through which mountains Indus River makes a gorge and enters into Pakistan? Through which mountains? Indus River makes a gorge and enters into Pakistan. Can you all see Nanga Parbat? Everyone, can you see a mountain in Jammu Kashmir region? Nanga Parbat. In every book, it will be there. Do you have? Nanga Parbat. Yes. So guys, syntaxical bend we call. Fine. Syntaxical bend. That means the river which is going like this turns like this. Fine. Which mountain? Nanga Parbat. Okay. Nanga Parbat is part of Trans Greater Lesser Shivaliks, Greater Himalayas. Fine. So it is Nanga Parbat. Okay, fine. Then can you tell me what is the direction of Indus River? After entering into Pakistan, what is the direction of Indus River? Now it is flowing like this. What is this place? North. East, South, West. From here to here, Southeast to Northwest. Then again, it is turning and coming back. What is the direction? Northeast to Southwest. Yes, they know these words confuse everyone. They know this confuse everyone. What you should do in the exam? As soon as you hear Northeast, Southwest, all this. Draw Indus like this. Draw Indus like this. Then you draw this. Don't go for ego. I know. It's fine. If you draw and check, it's not wrong. You should get it correctly. That's more important than your ego. Ego you can show to someone else. UPSC don't show ego. Don't get stuck in a question. Parliament question will be there. You get stuck. I do. I have read. 10 times. How, how can't I get it? You get stuck. Next 5 questions are gone. Your mind is stuck in parliament. Here Kushiara river, all other rivers will go. Guys, try, don't solve from now on subject wise questions. Solve full length. Full length is more dangerous than subject wise. Subject wise, one subject clarity will be there. Polity only. 
from polity to history history to ir ir to geography you need to switch your mind has to switch and one question if you don't know you get stuck there other questions you don't know what to see all these are problems of students once they come out is this clear yes see guys when it is moving like this when it is moving like this kabul river from afghanistan joins the indus river kabul river is a tributary and kabul river is making pakistan and afghanistan to fight and india is funding to construct dam there fine kabul river is between which two afghanistan and pakistan then guys if you see below which are the other rivers we have can you tell the regular rivers which one you have indus jhelum chena ravi bias satluj area wise which river flows more in india in india area wise which is more after vyas also satluj all this will flow see within this six only one should be there in india one like do you understand we know half that's the problem we know half we read only some that too based on previous year questions everyone knows now satluj is the one which will go and dump water last in indus but area wise every book will give areas we forget them we don't bother about them right every year question won't be same will I'll, i'll give you the facts but before that do you understand which is indian river which is pakistan river these three are called as western rivers which is given to whom pakistan these three are indian rivers fine we have complete rights over these three on these three do we have complete rights can we construct dams yes can we store water yes so you can go for run of the river projects not dams electricity generation is permitted dam construction is not permitted there is difference electricity generation without storing water much fine so we call such projects as what okay but the question is simple question they may ask you who mediated between india and pakistan world bank, world bank imf icj okay if there is a dispute we go to which one world bank imf icj un if there is a dispute will you again call world bank we have she was telling permanent court of arbitration under what icj only guys disputes judiciary is required so we don't ask world bank and all who will be there icj any dispute anywhere internationally recognized one is icj we go there only fine mediation will be always on the basis of that do you understand this six now when we want to repeal it we want to change it we are calling world bank world bank is in news because 
we are calling them because we don't want to question the law. Interpretation of the law is always done by judges, remember. Mediation can be done by anyone. Interpretation of law is always done by whom? Judiciary. Where is judiciary in the world? Two judiciaries are there, ICC and ICJ. All countries are not part of ICC. ICC is only for genocides, human rights and all. ICJ. Blindly you can come to that ICJ. I have another question. Loss and damage fund. Have you heard? In environment and ecology, loss and damage fund will be placed under what? Will be placed under what? It's not a separate fund. It will be placed under. Now, for example, climate change, Kyoto Protocol fund is there. Yes, biodiversity fund is there. They all come under what? See, yes, everything comes under what? Global Environment Facility. This Global Environment Facility has opened bank account in World Bank. So, all the money will be placed in which one? Global Environment Facility. So, this is the trick. In the exam, if they say, like you know, any environment related fund, biodiversity fund is coming is 30 billion dollar every year till 2030 is what they are planning. Where is that fund under global environment facility? Ozone depleting substances we need to prevent. Money is being provided. Where will they keep the money? GEF. Stockholm Convention with respect to persistent organic pollutants. Money is there. Where is the money? GEF. Wetlands. Fine. So, just remember, environment related money is mostly present in what? GEF. Where has GEF kept the money? World Bank. This has to be clear. Fine. Don't get confused. These are all basic things. Fine. Now you understood these six? Yes. Yes. Don't get into the tributaries of Jalam, Chinab and all. Most probably they won't ask you. Fine. But in case they ask, there are two things which is disputed. Kishan Ganga. Fine. On this we have a dam. That's why it is in news. But long time is not now. So only these six are more than enough. NCRT books, 9th standard, 11th standard, India physical is there. In that, Indus river, whatever information is there, read. Only Indus river in detail. Nothing beyond that. 9th standard, 11th standard, drainage system. Fine, Indus river, completely you should read. Nothing beyond that. Fine, Kushiara river is very, very important. Feni river is important. Ganges river is important. Fine, Ganga cities are important. These are crucial as of now. There are no other rivers which are in news much right but we will see once the other issues that we have fine take break guys yes 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 chinab is the longest river of indus right longest tributary of indus is chinab but within India, area-wise, longest is Sutlej. Sutlej travels almost like, you know, 1010 kilometers. So, Sutlej is longest in India. Fine. Longest tributary of Indus is Chinna. This is the difference. In India, which is longest? Sutlej. Next. 
so this uh, first we'll talk about maps again in afternoon now we'll focus on climatology right what are all the keywords that are important right we'll just try to recollect this first is evolution of atmosphere is fine yeah the first atmosphere is called as what primordial or primitive atmosphere so the first atmosphere which we had is primordial or primitive atmosphere any idea which gases were there hydrogen and helium gas be clear sun also has hydrogen and helium primitive atmosphere also had hydrogen and helium second stage was loss of primordial atmosphere so if i take sun mercury venus earth mars yes these are called as what inner planets or terrestrial what is terrestrial earth like planets rocky planets these are what outer planets jovian means what jupiter like planets it is also called as what gaseous okay from the sun what came in the beginning solar wind so can you tell me earth had primordial atmosphere this primordial atmosphere was lost due to which one solar wind prelims question right so due to solar wind primordial atmosphere was lost okay which planets lost primordial atmosphere first four planets lost why two reasons one they were closer to the sun compared to outer planets their gravitational force is less compared to outer planets outer planets are huge gravitational forces more inner planets are small gravitational forces less so now question is why outer planets retained primitive atmosphere inner planets did not two reasons what are the two reasons one is distance second one is gravitational force fine now prelims question juno satellite was launched to study primitive atmosphere in which of the following planets mercury venus mars jupiter why because the first four lost primitive atmosphere due to what solar wind this word is very very important fine now now what is going to happen guys once earth lost its primitive atmosphere what was left in the earth was molten magma and this molten magma started cooling because of cooling we also call it as degassing right degassing took place what is the first stage loss of primordial atmosphere what is second stage degassing 
is while degassing all the gases started coming out when all the gases came out right so you tell me is it coming out from the earth will earth allow it to escape or will earth hold it tightly will will it allow it to go out to outer space or will it hold it hold it due to earth's gravity so you tell me if i take earth surface a and b a is closer to earth b is away from the earth where will you have more air particles where will you have less air particles a will have more b will have less why all the air which was moving outwards is held by earth's gravity so what is the question why do you have more air density closer to the earth during degassing when air was trying to move out it was held by earth's gravity so you tell me if you have more air particles you have less air particles the difference is this more air particles less air particles which one will have high pressure which one will have low pressure is more high pressure or low pressure high pressure less low pressure fine now if i have more people in this room will i have high temperature or low temperature high pressure leads to high temperature low pressure leads to low temperature pv is equal to rt when v and r is constant p is directly proportional to t within the air if we consider right pressure and temperature will be directly proportional now my question is as i move from the earth surface pressure density temperature decreases is that correct so you tell me here a do i have more particles does that mean high density does that mean high pressure does that mean high temperature as i move above what is going to happen low density low pressure low temperature is yes? so as we move about three things are decreasing what are the three density temperature pressure what is the reason guys because air is held through earth's gravity do you understand now so this is the first part so what is first point what you what are you seeing loss due to solar wind what is the second point degassing now when the gases came out which gases came out which gases came out water vapor hydrogen nitrogen carbon dioxide did you have oxygen did you have oxygen during degassing is it no or very less ha huh. nothing is no right very less so oxygen was almost absent is correct oxygen was completely absent is wrong fine so do you understand degassing all this came into picture then you tell me what is going to happen guys fourth stage what did you get you had earth there was some amount of what carbon dioxide you also had water vapor water vapor formed what clouds once you got clouds rainfall started you tell me guys if there is more carbon dioxide temperature is it more or less in the atmosphere more but when there is rainfall 
water reacted with carbon dioxide to form H2CO3 and it fell into the oceans. Ocean started filling up. Fine. You tell me, is this a scenario where oxygen is present or is this a scenario where oxygen is absent? Ox oxygen is, till now we didn't talk about oxygen. So oxygen is what? Absent. When oxygen is absent, will you get anaerobic bacteria or will you get aerobic bacteria? So first living organism which came was anaerobic or aerobic? Anaerobic. So you got life. Can you tell me where? On land or in water? What is it? Anaerobic. This anaerobic underwent a phenomena called as photosynthesis. What happens in photosynthesis is what will be released? Carbon dioxide will be consumed. Oxygen is released. So, what is the next stage guys? Photosynthesis. Fine. Photosynthesis. Oxygen released. Then the fifth stage is human activities. Does human activities also lead to evolution of atmosphere? Yes. Fine. So what are all the stages? First stage is what? Primordial. That was lost. Then what happened? Degassing. And then what happened? Photosynthetic activity. And then what happened? Human activities. That also modified. These led to what we call as evolution of atmosphere fine then this two things one we need to talk about composition another one we need to talk about structure composition right we have three things gases water vapor and then dust particles gases water vapor and dust particles can you tell me now first gases what all will be there nitrogen oxygen third is argon Carbon dioxide, fine. In NCRT, please see the last four. Don't buy hard the first four. First four, everyone knows. Last four, try to know. Xenon, all those things, fine. So, basic is this one. And you tell me, are these gases present everywhere in same composition? Till where do you have same composition? Okay. What are the two words we use on the basis of gas, gas composition? We divide atmosphere into two layers. One is homosphere, another one is heterosphere. What all comes under homosphere? Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, that is till 80 kilometers we have homosphere. What is the meaning of homosphere? Same composition, heterosphere, we are talking about thermosphere. And in thermosphere, what will happen? Gases are present in which form? Layers. Right? One layer will be helium. One layer will be hydrogen. One layer will be nitrogen. Like this, they are arranged in layers. Fine? 
See here it is mixed. Here it is present in which form? Layers. When I say layers, it is arranged in layers in the form of density. So you tell me guys, nitrogen, hydrogen, which is heavy, which is lighter? Nitrogen is heavy, hydrogen is lighter. Which one will be closer to the earth? Which one will be away from the earth? Nitrogen will be closer, hydrogen will be away. So if I take this as earth surface and if this is my mesopause, Closer to the earth, what will I have? Nitrogen, oxygen, molecular oxygen, like you know, hydro, sorry, helium, and then you may have hydrogen. So it will be arranged on the basis of what? Density. Clear? So do you understand two layers? Which is the two layers? Homosphere and heterosphere. Okay, what separates homosphere and heterosphere? Mesopause. Mesopause. Fine. Then this. Second. We are talking about water vapor. So guys, a simple question. <coughs> Moist air is denser compared to dry air. Yes or no? Yes. Moist air is denser compared to dry air. Yes. Wrong. Dry air is denser compared to moist air. See, our thinking is like this. Water vapor is there. It will be denser compared to dry air. Correct? This is how we think. But if I take 1 liter of dry air. Can I say 78% will be what? Nitrogen. 21% is what? Oxygen. Now, let me say this is water vapor. Remaining is air. Okay. So, can I say I am replacing mostly nitrogen and oxygen with what? Water vapor. Do you all agree? What am I replacing? Nitrogen with what? Water vapor. Nitrogen is denser compared to water vapor. So I am replacing denser material with lighter material. Are you getting the point? So dry air is denser compared to moist air. Fine. Why? You see, I have 1 kilo iron. I have 1 kilo iron. If I take 1 kilo cotton, which is denser? Weight wise, both are same. How to know density? So, let's take 1 kg iron, 1 kg cotton. Let's throw it at someone. Which one gets affected? Iron, why? It is closer. Right. So, iron is denser, it affects more. Now, the point is, what I will do, I will cut half of iron. Half kilo iron I have. Half kilo cotton I will keep. Another side I have 1 kilo iron, which is denser. 1 kilo iron or half kilo iron and half kilo cotton is denser. 1 kilo iron is denser compared to iron and cotton correct so the meaning of this is when i replace denser with lighter what is going to happen density decreases so please remember this this is where we get confused in the exam this is not the time to understand concepts this is the time to remember the concepts what is it dry air is denser compared to moist air fine now i'm asking you equatorial region Equatorial region. Can I say high temperature area? Will you have evaporation and transpiration? Will you have more moisture, less moisture? More moisture. So let us talk about temp, uh, subtropical region where deserts are there. Will you have dry air or will you have moist air? Dry air. Let's go to 
like you know uh, sub polar low pressure area moist air will be there because rainfall and all will be heavy right so where will you have dry air more guys sub tropical region desert regions what do you have dry air where do you have moist air equatorial region sub polar region fine so this is very very important moisture based water vapor based and guys two points are important 90% of water vapor is present within 3 kilometers this fact is important 90% of water vapor is present within 3 kilometers 99% of water vapor is present in troposphere fine 90% is present within 3 kilometers 99% is present within 3 troposphere do you understand the facts now with respect to water vapor yes just one last thing volcanic eruptions gives us three things solids liquids gases solids are what ashes tephra pyroclastic materials liquid is what lava or magma gases are water vapor fine 90% of gases in volcanic eruptions are water vapor and sulfur dioxide fine so that is very very important what is the major source of water vapor what is it volcanic eruption sulfur dioxide also what is the main source volcanic eruption environment and ecology is fine then third what do you have dust particles okay because what is the use of dust particles guys for clouds see water vapor can't become water without any other body present that's why whenever glass is there leaves are there land is cool when water when air blows what is going to happen condensation takes place so that word is called as what hygroscopic nuclei which is helpful for what cloud formation good now coming to this 99% of this is present within troposphere then where will you have more dust particles where rainfall is more or where rainfall is less where will you have more dust particles where rainfall is less or where rainfall is more see guys when rainfall occurs the rain will carry dust particles to the ground it will carry see let us say uh, there is a mud road when you walk dust raises to ensure it doesn't raise our elders what they used to do they used to go and put water in front of the road so that all those will settle down dust doesn't raise delhi what they do they know this dust particles leads to smoke smoke leads to smog so what they do they spray water in the air when they spray water in the air all those dust particles settles down so to reduce dust particles what you should do you should spray water artificially what you should do spray water naturally what should happen rainfall must be there so you tell me now where will you have more dust particle where deserts are there or where heavy rainfall is there deserts are there fine wherever you have deserts you will have more dust particles fine this 11th standard ncert book has all these things in different languages fine but do you understand now 
So where will you have more humidity? Where will you have equatorial region, subpolar region? Where will you have dry air deserts? Where will you have dry air deserts? Where do you have more dust particles? Deserts. Fine. So deserts have more dust particles. Clear? So yes, now So now, let us talk about structure. First one is troposphere. Fine. So guys, the height of troposphere changes with seasons. Changes with latitudes, which is right, which is wrong. This, this is the air. Tropopause. Can you tell which is hot, which is cold? This is hot, which is cold. Cold. Everyone? This is hot. This is cold. Yes. Can you tell me now? Hot air expands or contracts? Cold air contracts or expands? So now you tell. Is the height varying? 8 kilometers? 18 kilometers? 13 kilometers. Correct? The height of troposphere, height of tropopause, both increases from where to where? Poles to equator. So, can I say when it is moving from poles to equator, what is happening? Height is increasing. Everyone? Yes. Now you tell me summer season, is it more hot or less hot? Winter season, is it more cold or less cold? So can I say more cold means further compresses, more hot means further rises. So now you tell summer season expansion, winter season contraction. Which seasons are they changing or are they not changing? Changing. So troposphere height changes with what? Seasons. It also changes with what? La okay, latitudes or longitudes? Not longitudes, not longitudes, so are you getting the point, yes, so we have like you know expansion and contraction happening alternatively, clear, everyone please observe the second question, A, B, C, D, E, F, fine, now, Surface temperature near equator is more compared to poles. Correct? Surface temperature near equator is more than poles. That means A is hotter compared to C. Correct? Everyone? Yes. 
अपर एयर टेम्परेचर अपर एयर टेम्परेचर नियर पोल्स इज मोर देन इक्वेटर डी इज ग्रेटर देन एफ बॉटम इज क्लियर विच इज हॉट ए इज हॉट कंपेर्ड टू सी नव यू टेल मी विथ इंक्रीज इन हाइट टेम्परेचर डिक्रीजेस एट वॉट माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस डू रिकलेक्ट माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव दिस इज जस्ट एट किलोमीटर्स सो वेन आई रीच हियर टेम्परेचर विल बी माइनस फोर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस वेन आई रीच हियर टेम्परेचर विल बी माइनस फिफ्टी फोर डिग्री सेल्सियस When I reach here, temperature will be minus sixty degrees Celsius. So, which is hotter, which is cooler? D is hotter. F is. Ha. Huh. Now you would see the statement. See, guys, what we see is only half. UPSC ask another half. That's why you always have doubt in two options. Right. So what you know, everyone knows. What others don't know, when you know, then only you will clear. can you tell now what is the case everyone surface temperature which is hot which is cold a is hot c is cold upper air temperature which is hot which is cold ha what is the meaning of that poles are hotter compared to equator as soon as the word you see there in the exam poles are hotter compared to equator you will tell wrong but you should see what is it upper air upper air temperature of poles is hotter compared to equator now they will ask why sometimes they may give you the statement and say why what is the reason guys because tropopause height varies from where to where poles to equator tropopause height varies from where to where poles to equator do you all understand yes this is also ncert statement upper air temperature chapter you see 11th standard they have given clear then guys all the clouds are present in troposphere only no troposphere has most of the clouds yes then convection happens in troposphere convection happens in troposphere yes okay temperature decreases with height in troposphere temperature decreases with height in troposphere correct why why see i'll give you three statements as i told you this is not the time to understand this is the time to recollect what are the options three options you see high density of air is present closer to the earth and as we move about density decreases correct why is density more closer to the earth gravity 90% of water vapor is present in lower atmosphere as we move about water vapor reduces and water vapor absorbs both sun's radiation and also earth's radiation so wherever water vapor is there normally what is going to happen temperature increases so second reason is 90% of water vapor is present in lower atmosphere fine third what can be the reason okay what is the major source of heat for atmosphere sun or earth which is the major source of heat for atmosphere i'm not asking for earth earth is the major source of heat for atmosphere right you have something called as heat budget in the heat budget it is very clear that 
Earth is the major source of heat for atmosphere. So what is the third point? What is the third point? What is the major source of heat for atmosphere? Earth. So now you tell me, Earth is the candle. Earth is the candle. I am closer to the candle. I am far away from the candle. If I am closer, will it be hot? Far away? Reduces. So now you tell, if earth is the major source of heat for the atmosphere, layers closer to earth will be hotter. As we move away, it will be cooler. Do you all agree? So what are the three statements guys? Can you tell why in true? Yes, already questions are asked in different languages. What are the three reasons? Can you tell? High density of air is present closer to the earth's surface. 90% of water vapor is present closer to the earth's surface. Third is what? Earth is the major source of heat for atmosphere. Air layers closer to earth will be warmer. As we move away, it will be cooler. Do you all understand? These are the three things with respect to what? Troposphere. Guys, now you tell me which layer separates troposphere and stratosphere? Tropopause. tropopause. Height of tropopause is same from poles to equator or does it change from poles to equator? Yes. Same. Third, what is the pause there? What pauses in tropopause? Something should pause, no? That's why they call it pause. Temperature. Temperature is uniform. If you see uh, NCRT, when they show temperature, they write like this. They write like this. That means it will be same temperature. So what pauses? Temperature pauses. Fine. So average temperature near tropopause is minus 54 degrees Celsius. Average height of tropopause is 13 kilometers. But as you know, it changes from poles to equator. Fine? Okay. Which is the layer present above this case? Stratosphere. Stratosphere, I'll give you a statement. You check and tell me. In stratosphere, we observe ozone. Okay. We observe ozone only in stratosphere. Where you have ozone? Troposphere also. Okay. Which is anthropogenic, which is natural? Which is anthropogenic, which is natural? Troposphere is anthropogenic. Stratosphere is? Okay. Now within stratosphere, fine. Lower stratosphere has thick ozone. Upper stratosphere has thin ozone. Is that true? Yes or no? Yes. So you tell me in stratosphere with increase in height, temperature decreases. Increases or decreases? Why does it increase? Conduction happens because temperature decreases. Temperature increases. What is the reason? Yes? Okay. Presence of what? No, you, you are telling correct. What was that? Presence of what? See, yes, this is tropopause. Where is thick ozone? Where is thin ozone? Below thick ozone, above thin ozone. Okay. Is it closer to the earth or far away from the earth? Far away. So, earth doesn't have direct influence on ozone. Second, does ozone absorb sun's radiation? Yes. A and B. Fine. Both are ozone only. Okay. Now, I'll take big tumbler of water, small tumbler of water. Fine. I will heat both. Which one will get heated soon? Which one will take time? Small tumbler will take less time. Big tumbler will take more time. Now you tell me, 
this is big tumbler this is small tumbler which one will get heated soon ye ye will be hot b will be cold so now you tell me will cold go up and hot come down you see here c and d this is hot this is cold so now you tell me which is heavier which is lighter d is heavier c is lighter so will d come down will c rise this is called as what convection you tell me here guys cold is denser hot is lighter will cold go up and hot come down no now if cold doesn't go up hot doesn't come down that means do you have vertical movement of air or no vertical movement of air no vertical movement of air do you have horizontal movement of air or do you have vertical movement of air horizontal as you have horizontal we call it layer we call ozone layer we don't call ozone as a gas in stratosphere do you recollect what do we say ozone layer is there why do we call it ozone layer because there is horizontal movement it is not vertical movement what is there horizontal movement now you tell me if i have horizontal movement if i have vertical movement which one will help in movement of aeroplanes vertical will it help horizontal whether it helps or not you tell me vertical aeroplane is moving like this air is hitting is it good no so you tell me in stratosphere why does aircraft move absence of vertical movement of air is it correct yes second clouds are completely absent in stratosphere is it correct clouds are less in stratosphere is it correct yes so guys why do you have aircrafts in stratosphere two statements which are the two statements one there is no vertical movement of air is this correct yes if they give you there is no horizontal movement of air is it correct wrong horizontal is there what is not there vertical movement is not there second important thing less clouds no clouds less clouds do you understand aircraft moves because there is no vertical movement and there are less clouds fine stratosphere is good for aircraft movement fine so now this when you have volcanic eruption normally the gases which comes here you tell me in stratosphere due to volcanic eruption gases came those gases will it move vertically more or will it move horizontally after some point it reaches and then what is going to happen why does it spread horizontally in stratosphere there is a tendency of spreading horizontally the sulfur dioxide layer is found in stratosphere called as bunge layer b u n g this can be asked in prelims what is bunge layer it is sulfur dioxide layer when this layer was found in prelims there was a question sulfur dioxide will it act as right uh, positive or negative this with respect to climate change will it increase climate change or will it decrease climate change what is the term you use in environment ha huh. will it increase temperature of the earth or will it decrease temperature of the earth sulfur dioxide increases or decreases see guys sulfur dioxide's property is reflecting sun's rays sulfur dioxide reflects the sun's rays that is the characteristic of sulfur dioxide fine now you tell me if it reflects will it reduce temperature of the earth or will it increase temperature of the earth so human beings are going to stratosphere they are spraying sulfur dioxide there 
Sulfur dioxide is danger in troposphere because it forms acid rain. Sulfur dioxide is very good in stratosphere. Do you all understand? See, these are misconceptions. Why? Because for you, sulfur dioxide is a pollutant. Any pollutant is a danger. Correct? Sulfur dioxide is a pollutant. And what do you feel? It's a pollutant, then it should affect climate change for sure. That's how you think. That's not the case. What about water vapor is? Water vapor, is it good for climate change? Bad for climate change? Global warming, I mean. Is it good for or bad? Why? It absorbs heat. So it is called as natural greenhouse gas. Which is natural greenhouse gas? Water vapor. It absorbs sun's rays also. It absorbs earth's rays also. Do you understand guys? Stratosphere, three things. Ozone. Where do you have thick ozone? Where do you have thin ozone? Near lower stratosphere, thick. Upper stratosphere, thin. Second. Is there vertical movement or horizontal movement? Third, Bunge layer associated with what? Sulfur dioxide. That is associated with volcanic eruptions. Fine. Sulfur dioxide reduces global warming or increases global warming? Reduces global warming. Fine. In another language, if they ask you, sulfur dioxide reflects, absorbs, radiates. What does it do? Reflects. Fine. Next guys, above this layer, now I have another question, can you tell which layer separates these two, stratosphere and mesosphere, stratopause, okay, the height of stratopause remains the same. Or does it change like? tropopause it remains same unlike tropopause stratopause height remains same fine at 50 kilometers fine then can you tell me which is the coldest layer of the atmosphere which is the coldest layer of the atmosphere mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere because temperature will become minus 80 degrees Celsius. Fine. Mesosphere is the coldest layer. Okay. Then, guys, meteors, meteors burn in which layer? Why? Yeah, they catch fire. Why do they catch fire? Friction. Friction. Okay. So, guys, what is the difference between meteoroid? Meteor, meteoroid. Prelims three times they have asked. Previous year questions and all, if you see, three times they have asked. See, first, what is asteroid? Asteroid. Irregular shaped rocks in between Mars and Jupiter is called as what? Asteroid. Meteoroid. Irregular shaped rocks floating in the atmosphere, sorry, floating in the solar system is called as what? Meteoroid. Right? If the meteoroid enters into Earth's atmosphere, it is called meteor. If the meteor hits the Earth, it is called as meteoroid. Fine? So, terms are important. When it is floating in the solar system, it is meteoroid, enters into Earth's atmosphere, it is meteor, hits the Earth, it is called as meteoroid. Guys, so when meteor enters, it burns in which layer? Mesosphere. There are two contradictory statements here. One, mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere, meteors burn in mesosphere. Meteors are burning not because it is hot. Meteors are burning because of friction. This is the difference. Fine. Then if the meteor has water vapor, if the meteor has water vapor, then in mesosphere, 
you have a cloud called as noctilucent cloud please remember this is the highest cloud in atmosphere fine this is the highest cloud in atmosphere noctilucent cloud which layer this is present mesosphere Yes. above this layer we have two layers which are the two layers actually there is one layer called as thermosphere that is divided into two layers one is ionosphere another one is exosphere fine ionosphere what is present ions are present as ions are present they help in radio communication so which layer helps in radio communication either thermosphere or ionosphere both are one and the same now i'll ask you another question gaganyaan gaganyaan have you heard india is planning to launch gaganyaan gaganyaan will be launched in which layer of the atmosphere ionosphere ionosphere fine low earth orbit satellites low earth orbit satellites are present in which layer of atmosphere ionosphere clear this should be in ncrt 6th standard in the atmosphere diagram they would have given spacecraft in thermosphere that means low earth orbit is present in which layer ha huh. yes upsc asks you questions from ncrt only we won't see properly fine so do you all understand now yes and just remember one thing troposphere with increase in height temperature decreases stratosphere with increase in height temperature increases mesosphere increase in height temperature decreases thermosphere increase in height temperature increases alternatively it is present just keep that in mind clear that's the only aspect that we need to see with respect to atmosphere yes. fine where is aircraft moving why is it good no vertical movement less clouds fine then next second we have temperature before we go to temperature one question which always keep coming is about rotation and revolution then i'll go to temperature yes. mandatory one question will is there on this fine okay now you tell me day and night is due to what okay i'll give you options rotation of the earth revolution of the earth in tilted axis revolution of the earth in elliptical orbit 1 2 3 okay one only day and night is due to what rotation only Ro revolution in tilted axis revolution in elliptical orbit all the three we feel rotation revolution we won't read that chapter only sure one only one and tilted axis one and two tilted axis or elliptical orbit yes think think once always we have a tendency to take examples and prove the point correct what is the example we take india as the example and we say day and night in india is due to rotation of the earth correct no doubt what about poles six months of day six months of night six months of day six months of night means something associated with revolution fine so 
revolution of the earth in tilted axis plus rotation is responsible for day and night fine now here comes two points first you tell me what is the axis of the earth rays is it tilted or is it straight tilted tilted at what axis i'll give statements you think earth is tilted at 23 and half degree to horizontal line to this line or this line 23 and half is for this line or this line so this is what this is what fine exam this is enough to confuse we just see one word what is it 23 and half correct rest all will leave i told you number is always wrong in upsc geography number will be wrong they would have modified the next statement it looks same so now you tell what is it 20 earth is tilted at which axis 23 and half to vertical line 66 and half to horizontal line okay guys if i take this this is my 66 and half this is my 90 degree this is my 66 and half this is my 66 and half this is my 66 and half correct what do i call this line as what is it arctic circle what do i call this line as antarctic circle very good now i'll ask a simple question what is antarctica how do you define antarctica ha statements five continent islands water whichever is below 66 and half is called as antarctica yes or no below below 66 and half whatever is there is part of antarctica is that true only land mass okay only land mass islands and all are they part of antarctica see it is not 66 and half it is 60 degree fine continent islands water whichever is below 60 degree any islands that are there that is called as antarctica not oceans one <coughs> only the continent and the islands whichever is below which latitude this year it is very very important because you have antarctic treaty we have made an act we read everything about the act who brought why we brought what is antarctica we don't know what latitude this is where what happens one option is gone out of four options one is gone remaining three you know you take risk because 66 and half is called antarctic circle why will they call antarctic circle because antarctica is there that is our thinking correct 60 degree south remember is anything below 60 degree south is called as antarctica fine and we will see antarctica is divided into west antarctica and east antarctica what separates west antarctica and east antarctica we know only europe and asia ural mountain separate europe and asia this year can they ask question on antarctica you tell is there a possibility why act as there rather than asking about that they can ask basic things where is it present you have trans antarctic mountains that separates trans antarctic mountains separates west antarctica from east antarctica i'll show you that land islands any glaciers or anything that is present that also will be part of antarctica itself okay 
now you understood this arctic circle antarctic circle don't get confused it is just it is just a line where you have the maximum tilt that is there fine see guys now this line if i take this is called as circle of illumination okay nice so what separates day and night which line separates day and night circle of illumination one side will be day another side will be night fine now now have clarity the first point that you need to know is from 66 and half to 66 and half arctic circle to antarctic circle day and night is due to rotation of the earth 66 and half to 66 and half day and night is due to what rotation of the earth 66 and half to 90 66 and half to 90 day and night is due to revolution of the earth in tilted axis so overall day and night is due to what two reasons what are the two reasons rotation of the earth plus revolution of the earth in tilted axis clear so where does india come 66 and half to 66 and half fine okay this is about rotation earth rotates from where to where west to east okay now tell me about revolution yes yes when does india has chaitra one which date prelims question march 21st or 22nd that is when sun's rays will fall vertically over equator fine that is called as chaitra one prelims question fine so you have march 21st sun's rays is vertical over what equator okay when sun's rays is vertical over equator what is that phase called as what is it equinox what is the meaning of equinox equal day and night guys now comes day and night see near equator near equator throughout the year day and night is 24 hours equal day equal night please remember this at equator day and night irrespective of june 21st september 22nd equinox solstice never bother near equator day and night is always 24 hours 12 hours of day 12 hours of night because of shape one round it has to go no so it will be because of that 12 hours of day 12 hours of night clear now when i go above equator and below equator now equinox is the time entire earth will have 12 hours of day 12 hours of night not only near equator everywhere anywhere on earth you will have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night even near the poles then you have second one june 21st or 22nd sun's rays is vertical over tropic of cancer and in northern hemisphere you will have summer and what will you have solstice what is the meaning of solstice unequal day and night now my question to you is you think and tell on june 21st which of the places will have longest day fine which of the places will have longest day on june 21st fine now tirunanthapuram 
Mumbai, fine, Bangalore, Delhi. Which one will have longest day? Which one will have shortest day? Okay, first, 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 you think summer, summer, day is more compared to night. Day is more compared to night, correct? You tell me, sun's rays is vertical over where? Tropic of Cancer. Good. Poles. Poles. Which one will have day throughout? Which one will have night throughout? North pole or south pole? North pole will have day completely. South pole will have night completely. Correct? That means near equator, I told you, always time will be how much? 12. 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. Near poles you take now. Near poles you take. When you take near poles, that is from equator to poles, if I am going. Yes? Equator is how much? 12. Poles is how much? 24. From equator to poles, is the day length increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. So remember, I know why you are telling Mumbai. Because Mumbai is closer to Tropic of Cancer, correct? See this. Tropic of Cancer, if a place is closer to Tropic of Cancer, it will be hotter. Day will not be more. Day is associated with sunlight, not associated with temperature. That means if temperature decides day, then deserts must be always having longest day. Correct. So sunlight determines. Sunlight as we go near poles, it disperses. NCRT 7th standard, they will show it disperses. Correct. So as you move towards the poles, what is going to happen? Day length increases. So NCRT gives us a box. Is this looks very simple? In the exam, in the exam, you use your own brain. After coming back, see if the same question was given, you would have used on the basis of sunlight falling vertical on Tropic of Cancer. Yes, correct. Then Mumbai should have 24 hours, poles should have less according to your logic. So you tell me what is happening. So NCRT gives this box, summer solstice. Zero degree. 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree north. I am talking about northern hemisphere. You will have day and night if I take. Fine. Day and night. 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. Day and night. 14 hours of day, 10 hours of night. 16 hours, 8 hours, day and night, 24 hours, night will be zero. Fine guys, see June 21st, equator is 12 hours day, 12 hours night. As I go, 14 hours day, 10 hours night, 16 hours day, 8 hours night, 24 hours zero. That means what is the meaning guys? As I move from equator to poles, day length increases or decreases? Increases. Summer season, day length increases from equator to poles. Winter season, what is going to happen? Day length decreases from where to where? Equator to poles. Now you tell me, on June 21st, Thiruvananthapuram, which one will have longest? Delhi will have longest. UPSC knows you don't know countries. So they will give you places within India. If Srinagar is given, which one will have longest? Srinagar will have. As you are away from equator, day length increases. As you are closer to equator, day length decreases. UPSC won't ask you complicated questions. They know. Basic itself is complicated. Latitudes, longitudes, one question will be there. Yes. 
rotation revolution one question will be there and always remember june 21st is favorite of upsc like you know in different languages they are asking same thing fine one year they are asking like you know uh, when do you have the longest day first half of june second half of june second half of june june 21st remember that fine so do you understand what is the statement guys summer solstice day length increases from where to where equator to poles night length increases in winter season from where to where equator to poles same thing winter night increases summer day increases fine so now you understood june 21st what about another date guys which is the next date yeah september 22nd what is going to happen guys again sun's rays is vertical over equator you will have what we call as equinox okay december 22nd or 23rd where is sun's rays vertical tropic of capricorn what is this what do you call it as winter solstice fine all this you have read reading to understand is different reading for exam is different yes. you understand you can teach to others see this is what happens but when questions come we get confused with the language because we apply more brain that's the problem anyways you understood now guys you see summers are severe in northern hemisphere winters are milder in southern hemisphere is it correct that means summers are extremely hot in northern hemisphere compared to southern winters are extremely cold in southern hemisphere compared to northern which statement is correct which is wrong okay which hemisphere summer is very hot northern hemisphere why see if, if there is any question if there is any question why northern hemisphere more southern hemisphere less the only answer is land is more in northern water is more in southern but this is not a question with respect to that i'm not comparing i'm asking you is that correct are summers hotter in northern more compared to southern okay. so now comes earth okay this this is called perihelion aphelion this it is like this that means southern hemisphere is closer to the sun that means december 22nd but the farthest place is mostly sorry nearest place is 
Jan 4th. Have you seen NCRT says Jan and July? They don't use December and all. Jan and July everywhere in NCRT. That is because perihelion and aphelion positions. So, guess you tell me January, northern hemisphere, is it cold, winter or summer? Jan, winter? Yes. What do you have? Northern hemisphere is winter, southern hemisphere is summer. Yes, this, can you tell this is July? July. Northern hemisphere is summer, southern hemisphere is winter. Okay. Everyone, now you think and tell. Summer season, everyone, summer season, southern hemisphere is closer to the sun. Will it be hot or cold? See, summer season, if you are closer to the sun, will it be extremely hot or mild? So, can I say summer will be severe? Northern hemisphere, summer is away from the sun. Will it be mild? If I am away from the sun, will I feel little cold comparatively? So, what is this? Mild summer. Now you tell me, it's winter season, I am close to the sun, that means sun is very hot, I am closer to the sun, will I feel very cold or will I feel less cold? Mild? Winter season, I am very far from the sun, will I feel extremely cold? So, if you see, summers and winters are severe in southern hemisphere compared to northern hemisphere. Why? Why? Revolution of the earth in elliptical orbit. This is the only question where distribution of land and water is not the answer. So, don't say land is more in northern hemisphere, less in southern hemisphere for this. This is the only question, exception. Did you understand? See, revolution of the earth in elliptical orbit leads to perihelion position and aphelion position. Aphelion means far. Summer season, northern hemisphere is far from the sun. That means it will be mild. Winter season, southern hemisphere is far from the sun. So, it will be severe. Opposite happens when it is closer. Clear? Done. This is rotation and revolution. Then this. Latitudes and longitudes. We will come to temperature. Latitudes and longitudes. So, simple points which you are aware. So, first, uh, equator is the great circle which divides earth into two equal halves. How many latitudes do you have? How many latitudes are there? See, yes. normally some people consider 90 degree north and 90 degree south as dots. They say it is not latitude, it is dot. If you go by that logic, if you remove 90-90, fine, you will get 179. If you consider 90 degree north and 90 degree south also, you see 1 to 90, 1 to 90 is 180 plus 0 degree is 181. So, in total you are going to make 181 divisions of the earth. Yes. And so, every latitude is how many kilometers? Yes? 111 kilometers. Every latitude is 111 kilometers. 
how many latitudes are there 181 every degree is 111 and then the length of the latitudes decreases from equator to poles circles decreases from equator to poles they are called parallels because they do not intersect yes the duration of day and night is determined by latitude yes or no that means as i move from equator to poles daylight day night does it vary with respect to latitudes duration of day and night is associated with what latitudes fine and this temperature is also associated with latitudes do you agree as we move from equator to poles temperature decreases because solar insulation decreases fine yes. then comes longitudes yes. fine how many longitudes do we have 360 degree 360 degree longitudes are present then 82 and half is indian standard time it passes through how many states of india IST passes through how many states of India? Five? Four? Yeah, four, five, six, seven. Atlas, Prayagraj, you keep scale or pen like this and check. The pen passes through how many states you see? Which states Prayagraj you take? Just uh, 10 more minutes, guys. I'll give you lunch break. Guys, did you keep pen? Prayagraj? No, India map. India map. Ma India political map. Yes. If you keep pen or scale there, does it pass through Uttar Pradesh? Does it pass through Madhya Pradesh? Does it pass through Chhattisgarh? Does it pass through Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Sri Lanka? I'm not asking Sri Lanka is there or not. I'm asking does it pass through Sri Lanka? Yes. Guys, you saw? Everyone you saw? Close your atlas. I'll ask a question. Close. Close, 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 close. Yes? Yeah. Now you tell, does it pass through Yanam, Pondicherry? Pondicherry is there in Tamil Nadu. It is there in Andhra Pradesh. It is there in Kerala. Right. Pondicherry is there in, yeah. Does it pass through Pondicherry? Means Yanam. It, does it pass through Andhra Pradesh? Yes. Does it pass through Yanam? Now you see, in some atlas it passes through, in some atlas it doesn't. Even if they give open book, it's very difficult to tell whether it passes or not. Search, Google you search, Yanam, latitudes, longitudes you check. This atlas is not to the scale always. Different atlas will be in different scales. So just check, 82 and half passes through Yanam. Does it pass? Have they given yes? Eighty-two point one three. No, no. See, the point is, a city will not be only that much, no. So you just check eighty-two and half. Then you come to conclusion. 
82 and half, 82.5 longitude passes through. The reason is, have clarity now. In the examination hall, you can say yes or no openly on the basis of that. You type like that only directly, 82 and half. Passes through Yanam. If not, we are going to say no. No. Hmm. Yes or no? No. Basically, it's very, very close, guys. Very, very close. So, we normally say no, it doesn't pass through. But when you see the areas and all, you may feel it's right. Fine. It doesn't pass through. Remember, Jharkhand is not even close. Bihar is not even close. Fine, 82 and half. So, 82 and half passes through five states. They can ask you, what are the five? UP, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha. Fine? It's fine. Last. Yes, you understood this? Yeah. Temperature now, temperature, just see the facts. Guys, highest temperature is observed at which latitude? Highest temperature on earth is observed at which latitude? Twenty degree north has highest temperature. Zero equator doesn't have highest temperature. Why? See, there is difference. Rainfall is not associated with temperature. Clouds reflect. For me, what is more important? Clouds. So, clouds reflect sun's rays. Because of that, even though sun's rays is vertical near equator, highest temperature is not observed. Clear? Highest temperature is not observed. Prince question already asked. Highest temperature is not near equator mainly because of what? Where is it present more? 20 degree north. Why not 20 degree south? 20 degree south water is more. 20 degree north land is more. Okay. Can you tell when do you have highest temperature in a day? What is the time when you have highest temperature? 10 to 12, 10 to 12, 12 to 1, 2 to 4. Why? See 12 o'clock, sun's rays is vertical. Land gets heated. Then land heats the air above it. So, sun is not the major source of heat. Earth is the major source of heat for atmosphere. So, highest temperature is in between 2 to 4. Lowest temperature is just before sunrise. Do you understand? Highest temperature is when? Highest temperature 2 to 4. Fine. Lowest is just before sun's rays. That is called as diurnal range. Diurnal range. Then guys, what is torrid zone? Last. Where to where do you call torrid zones? 23 and half to 23 and half is called as what? Okay, what is the meaning of torrid? Hmm. 
yes quickly torrent see guys winterless area is torrid temperature is always greater than 18 degrees celsius fine winterless temperature is almost always or almost greater than 18 degree it is always greater than 18 degree at sea level but as we move about temperature decreases fine so equator is the region where there is no seasons equator is the area where you have no seasons at all absolutely no seasons fine always one season rainy season throughout frigid means what always temperature is less than 0 degree celsius what is torrid temperature is always greater than 18 degree celsius frigid always less than 0 degree celsius temperate what is the case summer is hot winter is cold that is temperate fine this is horizontal distribution uh, northern hemisphere water is much hotter compared to southern hemisphere why northern hemisphere water is much hotter compared to southern hemisphere why land is more in the northern hemisphere land is less in the southern hemisphere fine then think until fine think until two statements in lower latitudes lower latitudes means torrid in lower latitudes enclosed seas are hotter compared to open oceans in lower latitudes enclosed seas are hotter compared to open oceans meaning of this red sea is hotter compared to pacific ocean is that true is it true why land is hot as land is hot water will also be hot so red sea is much hotter compared to pacific ocean correct second in higher latitudes that means let's say lake baikal russia lake baikal is hotter compared to pacific ocean is it true Siberia is away from equator. Will it be cooler or hotter? Cooler. If it is cooler, water will also be cooler? Yes. So guys, lower latitudes, enclosed sea is hotter compared to open oceans. Higher altitudes, enclosed seas are cooler compared to open oceans. Fine. So because land will be cool as I go above statements nothing much fine then eastern side of the continents are hotter compared to western side of the continents eastern side of the continents are hotter compared to western side of the continents you take ocean currents i have australia like this this is east australian current west australian current which is hot which is cold east is hot west is cold now you tell me western side of the continent is cooler eastern side of the continent is warm fine this they will never ask you how temperate cyclones are formed they won't ask complicated questions basic questions will come from climatology means you need to have more complicated knowledge are you seeing atmosphere all the chapters which you know questions are more complicated we need to just work on them one question will come from rotation revolution 
one question will come from reflection radiation and all which we will see later one question will come from temperature these are the areas from where repeatedly questions are being asked fine so we need to work on them more hadley cell ferrell cell polar cell these type of things you will get less number of questions fine more focus is on this air masses fronts frontogenesis less number of questions let's focus on the basics from where more questions are there is this fine yes do you need anything more whatever you need just let me know today and tomorrow we'll try to revise all those uh, tomorrow also we'll see india like you know physiography roots maps whatever is important we will try to revise once go back today whatever we have seen see once again certain keywords becomes important fine if we are seeing with increase in height if temperature decreases it is called convection with increase in height if temperature increases it is called as what conduction what is the meaning of advection horizontal movement of air is called as advection horizontal movement is also called as wind right horizontal movement of air is called as wind now what is radiation is when we say radiation we have two things this is the first principle is let us say this is 100 degree celsius this is 50 degree celsius 100 degree is hotter compared to 50 degree so 100 degree will release short wave radiation 50 degree will release long wave radiation fine so now you tell me hotter the object shorter is the wavelength cooler the object longer is the wavelength fine so earth and sun which is hot which is cold earth is cold sun is hot which one will be short wave radiation which will will be long wave radiation sun will be short wave earth will be long wave that's why it is called as incoming short wave radiation outgoing terrestrial radiation or long wave terrestrial radiation now based on this is we have certain properties earth i have oxygen i have nitrogen clouds carbon dioxide greenhouse gases ozone fine so now this sun's rays is coming from above can i say ozone will absorb which one is uvb in uv also specifically it absorbs uvb fine ozone doesn't absorb entire uv ozone ozone absorbs uvb and then does nitrogen absorb incoming solar radiation nowadays questions are coming on absorption so you tell me does ozone absorb incoming solar radiation sorry does nitrogen absorb incoming solar radiation no does it absorb sorry does oxygen absorb solar radiation no does carbon dioxide absorb no carbon dioxide absorbs outgoing terrestrial radiation doesn't absorb incoming all the greenhouse gases doesn't absorb what about water vapor guys water vapor absorbs so can you tell me in atmosphere which one will absorb sun's radiation one is ozone another one is water vapor fine second is what do the clouds do 
most of the clouds what do they do guys reflect fine most of the clouds reflect now you tell me earth oxygen ozone everything doesn't absorb earth's radiation nitrogen ozone doesn't absorb earth's radiation what do clouds do with earth's radiation reflects back what about carbon dioxide guys absorbs what about greenhouse gases absorbs what about water vapor absorbs fine so outgoing terrestrial radiation is absorbed by greenhouse gases but water vapor absorbs both incoming and also outgoing fine and what do clouds do what do clouds do do they reflect or absorb okay did you get this did you understand this yes so now can you tell types of clouds Zero to two. Fine, guys. Nice. If you have horizontal clouds, it is called as what? Stratus. Fine. Horizontal clouds are called as stratus. Vertical cotton ball shaped clouds are called as what? Cumulus. Fine. Then guys, yes, horizontal but cotton ball shape is called as what? Strato cumulus. This yes, horizontal spread stratus. Cotton ball and vertical cumulus. Horizontal but looks like cotton ball is called as what? Stratocumulus. Horizontal but dark in color. Is first, first. What is it? You see? Horizontal stratus, vertical cumulus, dark colored clouds, nimbus. Fine, dark colored clouds are nimbus. Greater than 6 kilometers, any cloud is called cirrus. Fine, greater than 6 kilometer, any cloud is called cirrus. Now, Horizontal clouds stratus, vertical clouds are cumulus. It is also called as cotton ball shape. Like in one exam they had given potato shape, cotton ball shape. Fine. And another thing, when we say dark colored clouds, it is called as nimbus. Nimbus is not a type of cloud. It is just color of the cloud. And then you have higher than 6 kilometers. What is it called? Cirrus. It looks like hairy smoky. Cirrus clouds look like hairy smoky. As it is above 6 kilometers, normally it will have ice crystals. Why? As I move about, temperature reduces. So I will have ice crystals. Which one will have ice crystals? Cirrus clouds will have ice crystals. Remember this. Fine. So now coming to the next point. I divide clouds into low altitude cloud space, 0 to 2 kilometers. Can you tell horizontal is called as what? Stratus. Vertical is called as what? Cumulus. 
horizontal plus cotton ball shape is called as what stratocumulus dark color but is horizontally spread what do we call it as nimbo stratus okay then guys 2 to 6 kilometers 2 to 6 kilometers is called medium altitude it is called alto like you know we use the suffix alto fine there are two types of alto what are the two types one is horizontally present can you tell me what is the meaning of horizontally present yeah what is it called stratus so what is it called alto stratus fine so you tell me two to six kilometer vertically present what is the suffix alto what is the word cumulus fine so what do you call it as alto stratus alto cumulus then yes hairy smoky it normally looks like this this is called as what cirrus but if this is present horizontally it is called as what cirro stratus if it is present vertically what is it called Zero cumulus. What are the three terms you have? Cirrus, zero stratus, zero cumulus. Clear? So, can you tell what are the names? First, what is stratus? Horizontal. What is vertical? Cumulus. Dark color? Nimbus. Greater than six kilometer? Cirrus. Now you have stratus cumulus stratocumulus do you understand what is stratocumulus can you tell what is stratocumulus horizontal and cotton ball shape and what is the meaning of nimbo stratus dark color horizontal what is the meaning of alto stratus two to six kilometers stratus means horizontal alto cumulus means Two to six kilometer vertical. Cirrus means what? Greater than six. Cirro stratus means zero stratus means horizontally developed greater than six. Cirro cumulus means vertically present greater than six kilometers. Fine. Now you tell me some basic things. If at all I have some clouds which are present throughout. From here till here, right? Will they vertically present this? Will they be called as cumulus or will they be called as stratus? Vertically present, cumulus. Cumulus plus dark color. So, what is it called? Cumulonimbus. Fine. So, which clouds are present in all the layers? Which is that cloud? Cumulonimbus. Now, simple logic, you see here, if a cloud is like this, fine, can I say more area? Is it less rainfall or more rainfall? More area, less rainfall. But if the cloud is like this, less area, more rainfall. Okay, see, stratus, understand the terms guys. What is it? Stratus. How is it present? Horizontal. More area. Less rainfall. Drizzling rainfall is associated with which clouds? Stratus clouds. Fine. Drizzling rainfall is associated with stratus clouds. Heavy rainfall. You see now here? What will you have? Cumulus. Heavy rainfall, less area. Fine. Now, what do you understand by thunderstorms and lightning? Which clouds are associated with thunderstorms? Cumulonimbus. When will you get thunderstorms? Yes, ma'am? Uh, 
continuous updrafts and downdrafts of what? See this. Let us say this is cumulonimbus cloud. Not all clouds. Cumulonimbus. Why are we considering cumulonimbus? The reason for this is cumulonimbus clouds are vertically present in all the layers. Correct? As they are present in all the layers, that means can I say from 1 kilometer to 8 kilometers it is present? Yes. So now you tell me within this layer will you have only ice particles or will you have only water particles or will you have mixture of both? Can I say half of it will be what? Water. Half of it will be what? Ice. Correct guys? Half of it is ice and half of it is water. Now let us say like you know this is cumulonimbus cloud. This is a high temperature area. As it is high temperature, can I say you will have low pressure in that area? Can I say air keeps raising? Yes. So whenever air keeps raising, when the cumulonimbus cloud come like this. Cumulonimbus cloud come like this. Will it raise? Will it make noise? Imagine 8 kilometer thick of this one. When it raises, will the particles hit against each other? Can they make huge sound? That is called as thunderstorms. Fine. So when you have a cumulonimbus cloud, when you have air rising vertically upward and when the cumulonimbus cloud come there, what is going to happen? It raises. Clear? So, when will you have thunderstorms and lightning? See this. I have two cumulonimbus clouds. If they hit, they merge. They don't make sound. If they hit, they merge. They don't make sound. Don't think, okay, if they hit, they will make sound. When will they make sound? You are telling updrafting and downdrafting. What is the meaning of updrafting? Yes? When the cloud moves like this, correct? When the cloud moves like this, what is going to happen? All the particles will hit against each other. That leads to thunderstorms. So, prelims, they asked the question, when will you have thunderstorms? When two cumulus clouds collide, will you have thunderstorms? You feel yes at that time. Second, now you tell me, when there is vertical movement of air, Will you have thunderstorms? When there is vertical movement of air, will you have thunderstorms? See, only air if it is rising, will you have thunderstorms? Along with air, what should rise? Cloud should also rise. Which cloud should be there? Cumulonimbus clouds must be there. Are you getting the point? So what is what is it? Can you tell now? See. Sometimes we need to understand the concept with clarity, then only you will be able to answer any question they ask about it. Thunderstorms and lightning have become important, correct? So can you tell why do you have thunderstorms? Which cloud is responsible first one? Cumulonimbus. Guess apart from cumulonimbus, if there is any other cloud, it won't give. So two things. Thunderstorms are always given by cumulonimbus clouds, correct? All cumulonimbus clouds give thunderstorms wrong. All cumulonimbus won't give thunderstorms. But thunderstorms are always associated with cumulonimbus clouds. Fine. Second, these water particles will have charges, electric charges. When they interact with each other, then you get lightning. So thunderstorm and lightning both are associated with which clouds? Cumulonimbus clouds. What is cloud burst? What is cloud burst? Which cloud is associated with it? See this. Cumulonimbus cloud. In less area, less time, more rainfall. We call it as cloud burst. You see here? I have like this, I will make a hole, small hole. I will take it around Chandra layout. Can I say everywhere one one drop will fall. 
I will keep it like this. Turn. Will everything fall down at a time? That is called cloud burst. So what is cloud burst? Which cloud is responsible? All disasters are there with only one cloud. Which is that cloud? Cumulonimbus cloud. Less area, less time, more rainfall is called as cloud burst. Fine guys. Fourth important word. You see, hail storms. Have you heard? They are associated with what? Cumulonimbus clouds. That is also because when they rise, they hit, they collide and come down. That is also associated with what? Cumulonimbus. So what are the four things we saw? What are the four things? Thunderstorms, lightning, hailstorms, cloudbursts. They are all associated with which clouds? Cumulonimbus clouds. Fine? So guys, this is about the clouds. But I just want you to note down one aspect. Can you write below? Low altitude, low altitude, thick clouds, low altitude, thick clouds, reflect solar radiation. Low altitude, thick clouds reflect solar radiation and cool the surface and cool the surface. Second, high altitude, high altitude, thin clouds, thin clouds do not reflect sun's rays, do not reflect sun's rays, and sometimes, and sometimes they trap, they trap Earth's radiation, Earth's radiation and radiate it downward, and radiate it downward. Yes, the point is okay. fine. Low altitude thick clouds. What do they do? They send back. If they send back, this region will be cool. What about here is? They absorb which radiation? Earth's radiation and send it back. Can you tell which one will act as greenhouse gas and which one doesn't act as greenhouse gas? Is this a greenhouse gas? Why? It is cooling the earth. Is it a greenhouse gas? Why? Heating the earth. Yes, uh, you have positive factors, negative factors. We call forcings. In environment and ecology, you might have heard about climate forcings. Positive forcings, negative forcings. Whichever increases earth's temperature is called as positive forcings. Whichever decreases earth's temperature is called as negative forcings. Can you tell which one act as negative forcing, which one will act as positive forcing? This is what? Negative forcing. This is what? Positive forcing. Already asked, but may be asked in different languages. From last four years, regularly they are asking question on clouds, reflection and all. So because of that, have clarity. Fine? So these two, try to recollect. Fine? Next is. Yes, what is the meaning of albedo? 
albedo what is it reflection of sun's radiation is called as what albedo okay now you tell me snow desert forest grassland which one will have highest albedo arrange it order which one absorbs more in this which one absorbs more this yes. forest absorbs more for photosynthetic activity correct so if it is absorbed more it will have less albedo fine so highest albedo is which one snow second desert third grassland fourth are you getting the point if you get evergreen forest that will absorb more sun rays also won't fall down correct so the meaning of this is as green cover increases albedo decreases as green cover increases albedo decreases guys in snow also you have two words guys fresh snow old snow fresh snow will be normally white in color old snow will be pink in color fine so which one will be reflected which one will be absorbing fresh white will absorb pink white absorbs less pink absorbs more fine okay now on the snow on the snow i have two things that we talk this this is dust particles let me assume this is no on this no dust particles are there this is dust particle so on the snow also you have dust particle can you tell which one act as positive forcings which one act as negative forcings dust dust what will it do will it reflect or absorb reflect or absorb so dust particles reflect diffract sense back fine they act as what negative forces but whenever on the snow if dust particle settle what is it going to do it is going to absorb when it absorbs what is going to happen melting increases do you understand the difference so guys dust particles on the snow act as positive forces dust particles in the atmosphere act as what negative forces and volcanic eruption releases lot of dust particles as volcanic eruption releases dust particles it leads to cooling of the earth right dust particles from volcano leads to cooling of the earth fine this is like junction between geography and environment guys environment teachers will feel geography will cover geography will feel environment will cover no one covers right so is this clear yes now
ओके किस कैन यू टेल मी नाउ फर्स्ट फाइव डिग्री टू फाइव डिग्री वी हैव आई टी सीज इट फाइन इट इज कॉल्ड एज इंटर ट्रॉपिकल कन्वर्जन जोन विच इज असोसिएटेड विथ I'll tell all the facts is rather than explanation. We'll see one after the other. It is associated with solar insulation. Correct. As the sun's rays shifts, ITCZ also shifts. Correct. Third, ITCZ shifts more in the northern hemisphere, less in the southern hemisphere. Yes or no? Why? Land is more in the northern hemisphere, less in the southern hemisphere. Fine. Then. ITCZ is very important for cyclone formations. Yes or no? Wherever ITCZ is there, cyclones will be formed. Please understand this. ITCZ is very very important for cyclones. Why? What is ITCZ? It is the layer of highest temperature. As it is a layer of highest temperature, normally cyclones are present. I will tell you the difference now. First, can I say, can you tell me when will India have cyclones? What is the duration of cyclones in India? When do you have? What is the time? Which months you will have cyclones in India? Okay. See guys, cyclones are present. During ITCZ shifting from equator to Tropic of Cancer and ITCZ shifting from Tropic of Cancer to equator. So when ITCZ is moving above and ITCZ is moving below, we will have cyclones. And when will ITCZ move above and when will ITCZ move below? Cyclone definitely one question will come because India is always affected by cyclones. Fine. So guys, first. March 21st, where is sun's rays? March 21st, where is sun's rays? Equator. June 21st, where is sun's rays? Tropic of Cancer. That means ITCZ will move from where to where? Equator to Tropic of Cancer. During which period? April and May. So April and May is the time when we have cyclones. April and May, it is called as pre-monsoon period. Fine. Then guys, monsoon ends in September 22nd, 23rd. Mid-September it ends. October, November, December. ITCZ comes down slowly. So October, November, especially November and December is the time when we have cyclones again because ITCZ comes down. Fine. Till September, uh, ITCZ will be over Tibetan Plateau. It will come slowly after that. So in India, cyclones are observed in two seasons. Which are the two seasons? Pre-monsoon, post-monsoons. What is pre-monsoons guys? Which is the time? April and May. Post-monsoons, which are the time? October, November, December. This is the time when we have what? Cyclones. Can you tell what is the reason? It is the duration of what? ITCZ. So please remember this. ITCZ is responsible for cyclones in India during pre-monsoons and post-monsoons. Fine. And within ITCZ, we observe a region of calm called as doldrums. Fine. Doldrums. Third, can you tell me within ITCZ, whatever remaining air is there, it will move from west to east. What are those winds called as? It is called as equatorial westerlies. What is it called as? Equatorial westerlies. See guys, whenever ITCZ is near equator, first point, whenever ITCZ is near equator, you will have air moving from west to east along the rotation of the earth. As air moves from west to east, it is called as westerlies. As it is near equator, it is called as what? Equatorial westerlies. Can you tell me now, prelims question, what is the reason for equatorial westerlies? 
rotation of the earth from where to where? West to east. Equatorial westerlies is due to rotation of the earth from west to east. Fine. Next. Yes. What are these winds called as guys? Yeah. Can you name them? This is called as north east trade winds. This is called as south east trade winds. What are these called as subtropical high pressure? What are these called as subtropical high pressure? Fine guys. So what are these trade winds? Fine. Next. This subtropical high pressure is also called as horse latitudes. Fine. They are called as horse latitudes. Second. This is a zone of highest pressure where you observe descending and diverging air. So in geography anywhere if they give the term this was already asked in exam fine. If they give you low pressure low pressure always means we say two words. What are the two words converging and rising air is. Please remember ITCZ, subpolar low pressure anywhere. If at all we observe like you know converging and rising air then it is called as what? Low pressure. That means air will be like this. If it is like this we call it as what? Low pressure area. You tell me if it is descending and diverging. What do you call it as? High pressure area. Fine. What do you observe near subpolar low pressure? What will you write? Converging and rising air. What do you observe near polar high pressure area? Descending and diverging. The minute you see high pressure, it is descending and diverging. The moment you see low pressure, what is it? Converging and rising. Then guys, we have something called as feral cell. How do the winds move? From where to where do they move? West to east or east to west? West to east. Yes, winds are always named on the basis of where they start. It is called as what? Westerlies. Okay. Yes, you tell me westerlies are faster in southern hemisphere compared to northern hemisphere. Why? I told you northern southern only one. Land is more in the northern hemisphere less in the southern. Now you tell me guys do you have more oceans in southern hemisphere? Yes. If you have more oceans will you have more friction less friction? Less friction. If mountains, plateaus and all are there, will you have more friction or less friction? More friction. Northern hemisphere has more friction. Southern hemisphere has less friction. Because of this, westerlies are called as what? Roaring 40s. Furious 50s, Shrieking 60s. Fungus, three things. What are the three? Roaring 40s, Furious 50s, Shrieking 60s. Which hemisphere? Southern, Southern or Northern? Southern. Southern. And why this roaring, furious, shrieking? As I move from 40 to 60, land keeps on reducing. Water keeps on increasing. If water increases, speed increases. Second type of question. You see, height of waves are more in southern hemisphere compared to northern hemisphere. What is the reason? Height of waves are more in southern than in northern. Because what is going to happen? Wind keeps hitting, air keeps raising. 
Again, what is the answer? Land is more in the northern, less in the southern. Fine? So, guys. Next, guys, last one, what do you have? What is this? Polar East. Okay, what is this called as? Sub polar low pressure sub polar low pressure is yes, that is also called as frontal zone which one sub polar low pressure is also called as frontal zone what is the meaning of frontal zone where warm and cold air meets fine Done. Now, guys, whether you get a question from this or not, this is a basic concept where they just try to ask you which winds are moving, where it is moving, which is faster, which is slower, something of this sort. But the most important one is world climate, guys. One question will come definitely from this. Fine, world climate, one question, and the source is your GCV, right? But it's very easy to predict. Easy to predict. Don't think much. Fine. It's very easy. How? You see. First. You have. Like you know. 5 degree to 5 degree. 5 degree to 5 degree. I have two places. One is Amazon Basin. Another one is Congo Basin. Amazon and Congo. Is it near equator guys? Yes. So, if it is near equator, every day will there be sunshine? If there is sunshine, will the air rises vertically? If the air rises vertically, will you get convectional rainfall? Yes. Will you get which type of clouds? Yes. Vertical clouds or horizontal clouds? Vertical clouds. Vertical clouds means, can I say cumulus clouds? Now only we saw, is it cumulus clouds? Yes, vertical clouds or cumulus clouds. You tell me, is there possibility of cumulonimbus clouds? Yes, see two things. One, what is happening? Convection. Convection means vertical movement. Vertical movement means cumulus, cumulonimbus. You tell me if cumulonimbus is there, is there possibility of thunderstorms and lightning? Yes. yes. So, guys, now I will tell a statement. You think and tell. Every day in the morning, sky is clear. By evening, sky is covered with clouds. Fine. And then, you will get very heavy rainfall associated with thunderstorms and lightning. Which area are we talking about? Tropical evergreen forest, tropical deserts, Mediterranean climate, temperate climate. What are we talking about? Tropical evergreen forest. Are you getting the point? The moment you see everyday rainfall, Everyday rainfall because of sun's rays is there only in one place, which is that place, equator. Now, I have another way of telling you this. Can you tell me sun's rays is vertical near equator in which month's rays? Which month's sun's rays is vertical over equator? March 21st, September, correct? March, April, September, October. Now you tell if sun's rays is vertical over equator, will you get more rainfall or less rainfall? More rainfall? Yes. Yes. You see, 5 degree to 5 degree, I have which climate? Hot, wet, equatorial climate. Fine. What is that uh, vegetation here is? Guys, tropical marine. Tropical evergreen, all these words are one and the same. Fine. Now, they will give you statements like which region are we talking about? Everyday rainfall, but maximum rainfall during April and October. Which region are they talking about? Tropical marine. Okay. Now, you tell me, 
do they have heavy rainfall or do they have less rainfall if you have heavy rainfall is there shortage of water or is there shortage of sunlight what is the problem sunlight so will you have longer trees or will you have shorter trees longer trees why are there longer trees they are competing for what sunlight very good and can i say it will be present in the form of layers if it is present in layers it is called as canopy what is it canopy and guys if you have a tree like this on the tree some plants will try to grow that is called as what epiphytes guys please remember in the exam the moment you see the word epiphytes it is tropical marine climate no other thing will have epiphytes right the moment you see the word epiphyte that is the clue every day rainfall is one clue heavy heavy temperature every day rainfall is the clue afternoon rainfall basically means convectional rainfall that is another clue fine epiphytes is for what yes guys second second you tell me heavy rainfall will the soil be fertile yes. why okay. what is going to happen leaching yes please get the difference between leaching and erosion fine there won't be erosion erosion will happen when top soil is removed right leaching means when it is going down as it is not fertile people will go for shifting agriculture right so please remember why people follow shifting agriculture in this area because soil is not fertile now i have a simple question if i cut the trees and then i will grow crops i will abandon the land and i will go to a new area i will go to a new area is it called as then what is going to happen in that area new plants and all will grow that is called as primary succession or secondary succession secondary succession wherever we cut and if new crops grow in that area what do we call it as secondary succession right so guys which is the term which will help you epiphytes then guys i have five to 30 right three climates guys eastern side is called as tropical marine climate here it will be called as tropical grasslands here it is called as tropical deserts fine so always remember eastern side forest india you take india you take northeast india forest do you agree yes bundelkhand region grassland where is cheeta introduced madhya pradesh region yes that is what grasslands western region rajasthan region what do you have desert northeast is forest madhya pradesh is grasslands rajasthan is desert so this will be the phenomena south india is different because it's a peninsula north india will be like this anywhere in the world eastern side is forest middle you will have grassland western side is desert now i have a simple question is one region tree height is more another region tree height is less fine in another region only grasses are there the meaning of this you tell me is rainfall decreasing or rainfall increasing so how do you know rainfall has reduced by looking at the plants how can you tell rainfall is more or rainfall is less height so if height of the trees are more what is the meaning of that 
rainfall is more if height of the trees is less what is the meaning of that rainfall is less now you tell me i have a point tropical grasslands height of the grasses is more than human beings temperate grasslands grass is below my elbow can you tell where will you have heavy rainfall where will you have less rainfall tropical grasslands has more rainfall temperate grasslands has less rainfall please have this difference please. fine tropical will always have more rainfall compared to temperate fine but you tell me tropical means high temperature temperate means low temperature where will grass have more liquids juicy which one will be more juicy which one will be less juicy high temperature tropical low temperature temperate so you tell me where will juice be more where temperature is more or where temperature is less wherever temperature is less greenery increases wherever temperature is more brownish yellowish color increases so juice content is more in temperate grasslands it is less in tropical grasslands you tell me sheep will have more wool in tropical grasslands or temperate grasslands temperate grasslands so where will you have woolen textile industries more temperate grasslands has more woolen textile industries compared to tropical so first we'll go one one after the other you understood this which side of the continent do you have marine climate guys eastern. eastern side of the continent normally we observe which type of climate marine climate yes marine climate means it is also similar to tropical evergreen forest fine tropical evergreen forest marine climate is same fine yes while talking about agriculture i'll come again and i'll tell where which crops are grown so that it's easier fine grasslands yes. will there be more rainfall or less rainfall i'm telling compared to forest grasslands will have less but you tell me will it have zero trees less trees okay the height of the trees will it be taller or will it be shorter shorter fine grasses will be more but height of the trees will be less and guys they will get rainfall only during summer season due to convection so the word word please remember the word definite or definite seasons which region you observe definite seasons or you will have like you know wet summer and dry winters where do you find tropical grasslands wet summers dry winters which is it tropical grasslands seasonal variation is clearly present which region tropical grasslands fine so guys in this if i consider names prelims can be asked a lot one is south america which are the two places where you have tropical grasslands in south america guys campos lanos fine you have it in campos and lanos south america campos and lanos africa what is the name you have savanna sudan it is also called as sahel fine savanna sudan sahel 
in india which states of india you will have tropical grasslands yes see guys the region in between western ghats and eastern ghats this area deccan plateau region black soil region that comes under what tropical grasslands fine second you will also have near which plateau bundelkhand plateau in other terms guys please understand black soil region in india is almost grasslands black soil region in india is almost grasslands the reason for that is it is on the leeward side fine in australia you have australian savanna definite wet and dry seasons alternative wet and dry seasons wet summers dry winters all these words are associated with what tropical grasslands fine tropical grasslands and then guys we have tropical deserts which side will you have tropical deserts guys which side of the continents you will have deserts which side western side what are the reasons guys okay cold ocean currents then offshore winds good then guys it is a region of subtropical high pressure 25 to 35 region of subtropical high pressure what is the meaning of subtropical high pressure converging and rising or descending and diverging high pressure descending and diverging where is this happening subtropical high pressure what are you seeing here descending and diverging is first to most important point second if you take australia if you take australia winds blow like this fine 1 2 and 3 which is onshore which is offshore this sea to land is which one see guys sea to land is called as what onshore land to sea is called as what offshore can you tell which one will give rainfall which one doesn't give rainfall one gives rainfall three doesn't give rainfall so three is desert one is forest two is grassland three is desert fine marine climate grasslands deserts do you understand can you tell now ones which are there which are they can you tell ones grassland sorry forest grassland desert what is the first condition for desert subtropical high pressure what is the second condition is it offshore winds or onshore winds offshore winds fine offshore winds third condition is cold currents fine what are the three reasons for deserts on the western side guys four five times they have asked this what are the three con three conditions subtropical high pressure second offshore trade winds third cold currents fine subtropical high pressure offshore trade winds cold currents fine now quickly can you just see south america match the following can be asked guys you yeah, they have this tendency of pairs no 
we can say but not necessarily everywhere mountains are there if you take sahara desert there is no mountains that is also a reason but it is not exactly on the leeward side so uh, except atacama desert no other desert is exactly on the leeward side so no run to some extent yeah so guys south america can you all check the desert which desert is there atacama desert match the following they may ask you maps you see south america 25 to 35 western side physical map you see guys atacama desert do you have okay guess why 25 to 35 subtropical high pressure second offshore trade winds third which cold current is there can you tell match the following they may give you peru chile humboldt current do you recollect yes second guys can you all see africa ones africa uh -huh. northern africa do you have sahara desert northern africa do you have sahara desert yes 25 to 35 you have sahara desert which cold current is there closer to africa guys canary cold currents which one will be there canary cold currents fine yes southern africa can you see namib desert southern africa do you have namib desert everyone yes yeah namib desert benigula cold current yes benigula cold current can you tell now yes south america which is the desert you saw atacama desert which is the cold current you saw peru chile or humboldt africa northern africa which desert you have sahara desert which cold current is there canary cold current correct southern africa which desert will you have namib desert which cold current will you have benigula yes australia australia can you tell which desert is there western side great sandy desert victoria desert can you see great sandy desert victoria desert where do you have western side guys which cold current will be there australia is very easy western side is west australia eastern side is east australia which side are we talking about deserts western side which which one will you have west australian current guys now you see forget in the exam 30 days you will be able to recollect south america atacama northern africa sahara desert southern africa namib desert australia great sandy desert south america sorry north america sonoran desert fine in some atlas it might be there and it might not be there remember sonoran desert do you recall a california cold current yes california cold current is uh, Sonoran desert, Mojave desert, you might not find in some atlas, it's fine. North America near California, you will find that place. Okay, can you tell now? Can you tell now? North America, Sonoran, South America, Atacama, Northern Africa, Sahara desert, Southern Africa, Namib desert, Australia, Great Sandy desert, Victoria desert, they all come under that. Is this clear? So, guys. Simple, think until now. 5 degree to 5 degree, which forest will be there? Evergreen forest. 
eastern side which forest will be there evergreen forest in between what will you have grasslands and then what will you have deserts fine and then above we are not seeing each and everything is we are seeing where questions are repeatedly asked 30 to 45 degree guys in this region you will have mediterranean climate mediterranean climate fine yes i will tell the words please remember that means mediterranean fine winter season fine winter season rainfall will be there due to westerlies fine winter season due to westerlies rainfall will be there fine and as they have rainfall in winter season viticulture is practiced citrus fruit cultivation fine viticulture that citrus fruit cultivation will help in wine production now you see the terms winter rainfall westerlies wine production viticulture everything is associated with which climate mediterranean climate blindly you can go with it winter rainfall where will you get in the world mediterranean climate fine nowhere in the world winter climate is dominant predominant only which area ha. seasonal change in rainfall monsoon the minute you see seasonal change in rainfall what do you call monsoons the moment you see winter rainfall what is it that we are talking about mediterranean clear which fruits citrus fruits wine production fine and guys please remember in case in case if they give in other form cs in Koppen classification, any classification they give you. CS, this word, you by heart. CS means Mediterranean climate. Fine. CS means Mediterranean climate. Do you understand now? Yes. Definite wet and dry. What are we talking about? Tropical grasslands, epiphytes, what are we talking about? Tropical evergreen, western side of the continents, cold currents, right? Subtropical high pressure, offshore winds, what are we talking about? Deserts. Are you getting the point? Then this, you see this word? Temperate grasslands. I will tell you certain features you tell what will be the characteristics height is less less rainfall or more rainfall less rainfall juicy less temperature do you understand it is called meadows m e a d o w s the moment you see the term meadows Meadows basically means mostly grasses. See, I'll tell you the difference. Tropical grassland, height of grass is more. Trees are also more. Here and there you can see. 100 acres, one tree you will find. Which one? Temperate grasslands. Why? Rainfall is less. As rainfall is less, 100 acres, one tree. Here and there you find. But remember, these are called as wheat granaries of the world. Fine. They are known as what? Wheat granaries of the world. Because of Russia-Ukraine war, wheat granaries, G-R-A-N-A-R-I-A-S, because of Russia-Ukraine war, wheat production has declined in the world. Heat waves in Europe led to decline of wheat production. 
So India is the major wheat producer in the world today because others have reduced production because of their own reasons. Fine. So now you tell me if others have reduced, India is going to give wheat to different parts of the world. High possibility where are wheat produced in the world. Fine. In which climate do they produce wheat? What will you say? Tropical grasslands or temperate grasslands? Temperate grasslands. Wheat is produced in the world. Is this clear? This clarity you must have. Fine. What is wheat's main feature? Low temperature. Average rainfall. Not very heavy rainfall. Very heavy it won't grow. It requires average rainfall. In India, where is it grown? Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh region. We'll come to India. But do you understand this? Which is called as wheat granaries of the world? Temperate grasslands. Can you tell the names of these places? This year it is very important because there was food insecurity in the world. India told the world, give, give me a chance, I will supply wheat to the world. Next day it banned export of wheat. Right. Because we got to know that the world has shortage. Fine. So now can you tell North America prairies? What are the words? Guess? High possibility again they may ask you. Which are properly matched. North America prairies. South America Pampas Yes Campos and Llanos Don't get confused Campos and Llanos is tropical grassland Pampas is temperate grasslands Please understand the difference In exam when they give you which of the following is tropical grasslands you should know the difference. Campos, Lanos is which one? Tropical. This South Africa. What do you have? Weld. South Africa is weld. Australia is downs. New Zealand, Canterbury. Eurasia, Steppes. Fine. This in exam, question also will be given, answer also will be given. You need not think much. You should identify correctly matched or not. So every day 5-5 five, five minutes, every day 5-10 to 10 minutes, whenever you need to take break, wherever you are sitting and studying in your study halls and all, maps will be there. Correct? You would have pasted some maps. See there these places. Fine. Stick them. Write in sticky notes. Stick them places. Definitely one question you see every year will be on this area. This year there is a reason for them to ask these things. Fine. So this epiphytes, everyday rainfall, cumulonimbus clouds, thunderstorms and lightning, light long trees, canopy. These are all associated with what? Evergreen forest. Right. Definite wet and dry. Grass height is more. Trees are more. What do you call it as? Tropical grasslands. Possibility is there because of cheetahs. Fine. Possibility is there because of cheetahs. And they may ask you from where did we get cheetahs? Namibia region. In Namibia, which grasslands are there? Namibia, which grasslands are there? Where is Namibia? Africa. Will you have tropical or temperate? 
ट्रॉपिकल और टेम्परेट एंटायर आफ्रीका कम्स अंडर ट्रॉपिकल एक्सेप्ट ददरन पार्ट करेक्ट इट इज सवन्ना फ्रॉम वेर आर यू गेटिंग सवन्ना See that's what you know. Cheetahs are important, right? How many cheetahs came? You know. Where it came? You know. What is the climatic conditions? Fine. You you get this because of cheetahs. That can be a question. Deserts may or may not. They ask. Fine. Mediterranean. What are the words that you look for? Westerlies. Winter season. Viticulture, citrus fruits, which two letters I told you to remember? C S. They are all associated with what? Mediterranean climate. Temperate grasslands. Height will be more or less? Less. Meadows. Yes. And wheat granaries of the world. Fine. And then yes. in this particular part you will have china type of climate gulf type of climate not much asked don't worry here you have british type you have siberian type you have laurentian type all these are not required only one is important is that is my siberian type Fine. Yes, which latitudes are we talking about? Forty-five to sixty. Okay. Now, simple thing. Forty-five to sixty. Northern hemisphere land is there. Southern hemisphere land is absent. So, Siberian type of climate is present only in northern hemisphere, not there in southern hemisphere. What is the reason for this? Land is there in the northern. In southern, you do not have. Second. This is a region of front that is subpolar low pressure. If it is subpolar low pressure, what type of winds you will observe? Okay, converging and rising, descending and diverging. What will you find? Low pressure, converging and rising. As you have converging and rising, you tell me if air rises vertically, is there a possibility of clouds formation? so temperate cyclones will give rainfall in this area fine so guys now you see some very basic things two points i'll tell you i have hardwood evergreen forest and i have softwood evergreen forest high temperature and high rainfall hardwood evergreen forest low temperature and high rainfall softwood evergreen forest hardwood evergreen forest is present in tropical evergreen forest amazon basin and all this is present in something called as Siberian, or it is also called as taiga, or it is called as boreal. All are one and the same. Fine. Here you will observe which type of trees. Coniferous. Fine. Coniferous. Here, some words are important. Is the moment you see the term coniferous forest, we are going to talk about Siberian climate. Fine. Siberian climate or taiga or boreal. Anything. Coniferous forest is the key. Second, land is covered with snow. As land is covered with snow, leaves when they fall. Remember this. Leaves when they fall. they are not decomposed because the snow doesn't allow bacterial activity they are not decomposed if they are not decomposed it will form peat right it is called pt soil so where do you observe pt soil siberian taiga or boreal are you getting the point 
Where do you have peaty soil? Siberian, taiga or boreal. Then guys, as it is not decomposed, it will be alkaline soil. This term is also important. Alkaline soil is also present in Siberian climate. See, everywhere everything is not important, but every area has its own speciality. That speciality is important for us. Clear? Can you tell now? What all do you have? Coniferous. Okay. You tell me guys, which one will be used for furniture industry? Which one will be used for paper and pulp industry? Hardwood is used for furniture. Softwood is used for paper and pulp. Right? So, do you understand? These two. Yes, this is world climate. This is world climate. In world climate, hot wet equatorial climate, tropical grasslands, tropical deserts, Mediterranean climate, temperate grasslands, Siberian climate. Most repeatedly asked areas which you need to focus. And the key terms. One question definitely you will get. Work only among them. Fine. Work only among them. That's enough. Fine. So, is now we have something called as cyclones. Fine. Just we will see every year or alternative year one question will be there on cyclone because India is always affected by cyclones. Fine. Can you tell? Okay. Can you tell? What are the regions where cyclones are formed? Or what are the conditions for cyclones to be formed? Okay. What is the temperature? Is? Temperature. What? How much temperature must be there to have this? Is? 24 to 27 or even greater than that? Is. Temperature of 24 to 27 or even greater than that? Fine. Second, you tell me now, I have a question. Does it form in ocean or does it form on land? Why? So this, second, it requires moist air and that moist air will be present over oceans. Now I have a question. I have two things here guys. Please understand everyone. Two things I am talking about. What are the two things? One is I need oceans. Second is I need high temperature. Fine. And I am talking about tropical cyclones. Everyone I am talking about tropical cyclones. Can you quickly open ocean currents map? See ocean currents map. Yes, guys. Now, you see North America, everyone. Ocean currents map, North America. Do you have Gulf Stream? Everyone? Okay. Can you see North Atlantic, guys? Everyone. North Atlantic. Which are the two currents do you have? See, I'm, we are talking about North Atlantic. Tropical, not temperate, tropical region. Near America, do you have like you know Gulf Stream? Near Africa, do you have Canary? Everyone? Yeah. Where do you have Gulf Stream? Where do you have Canary? Near North America, we have yeah Gulf Stream. Where do you have Canary? Africa. Which is hot current, which is cold current? Gulf Stream is hot, Canaries is cold. Okay, where will you have cyclone? From these two conditions, can you tell where will you have cyclones? Gulf Stream. Can I say hurricanes? Hurricanes are there near Gulf of Mexico. What are the two reasons for that? Can you tell? What are the two reasons? 
temperature how much 24 to 27 moist why do you have high temperature in that region because of gulf stream why don't you have cyclone near africa western side of africa why won't you have cyclone cold current are you do you all understand next guys can you see can you see uh, eastern side of china which current is there guys eastern side of china kuroshio yes is it warm current guys typhoons do you recollect typhoon typhoons yes australia eastern side of australia do you have east australian current can we call willy 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 in australia now can you tell what is the reasons guys why do you have why do you have ocean sorry cyclones on the eastern side of the continents this was asked for 12 and a half marks why do you have tropical cyclones in gulf of mexico bay of bengal south china sea what is the reason for this can you tell warm currents warm currents moist air do you all understand yes okay third guys you tell me do you need cyclone to run in the morning and also in the evening or you want it to turn off in the night sleep and again start in the morning what should happen throughout it should be there throughout if it should be there throughout moisture must be there yes if throughout moisture is there should the sunlight heat more water or less water see i heat a big tumbler i heat a small tumbler which one cools quickly small tumbler cools quickly big tumbler takes time yes so basically the depth of solar rays must be at least 60 to 77 meter what is the first condition for tropical cyclone temperature how much 24 to 27 greater than 27 second what is the condition guys moist air that means what is required oceans what will happen if tropical cyclones come on land it is called landfall fine whenever tropical cyclones come on land it is called as landfall what is the depth till which sun's rays must penetrate is minimum depth that is required 60 to 77 why is it required to ensure that continuous supply of moisture is there fourth does it require itcz I told you ITCZ is required. So, guys, now please understand what is the meaning of ITCZ. Right. So, why South Southern Atlantic Ocean, Southeastern Pacific Ocean doesn't have cyclones much? Because ITCZ doesn't shift much in the Southern Hemisphere. Can you tell why ITCZ doesn't shift much in the southern hemisphere? Because water is more in southern, land is more in the northern. Can I say ITCZ shifts easily in the northern hemisphere? Shifts late in the southern hemisphere. So please understand, if they ask you why cyclones are less in southern, more in northern, the main reason for that is ITCZ. Next why cyclones are not there near equator what is the reason this so we normally say that coriolis force is required for cyclones to form and as there is no coriolis force near equator cyclones are not formed near equator yes reasons are the questions yes. you see previous year questions also these are the things asked so what is the temperature this 24 to 27 moist air third 60 to 77 meter depth fourth is what high tcz fifth is what Coriolis force is required. You tell me stable air is required or unstable air is required. Vertical movement of air is required for cyclone to be formed or not required. Can I say it should rise like this? Have you seen cyclone rising like this? 
if it has to raise like this should it be stable or unstable unstable so ncrt gives this statement that there must be vertical movement of air this okay, stable air doesn't make air to raise fine yes apart from this we also see that at the height of 8 to 13 kilometers above the i you will have moving outwards called as anticyclonic circulation fine yes anticyclonic circulation is it present below the eye or above the eye above the eye because below you will have cyclonic circulation fine Yes, as the air raises, you will get vertically air is rising, and air is raising till eight kilometers vertically. Can you tell which clouds will be there? Yes. Cumulonimbus clouds. Are you getting the point? So, if this is I, this is called as I wall. fine can you tell me i wall is made up of which clouds cumulonimbus clouds how upsc place you see within the i you will have thunderstorms and lightning where will you have thunderstorm and lightning i or i wall i wall will have thunderstorms and lightning i will not have thunderstorms and lightning fine see guys i is a region of calm as it is a region of calm we call it doldrum do you recall it doldrum where you saw itc is it this is also doldrum region of calm is called as doldrum what is the diameter of i 10 to 30 km fine Diameter will be how much? Ten to thirty kilometers. Will you have clouds or no clouds? Will you have clouds or no clouds? No clouds. Next, you tell me. Will the temperature of this region be more, or will it be less? If you have to have lowest pressure in this region, this is the area of lowest pressure. that means you must normally have what highest temperature you see is beside what will be there everywhere clouds will be there everywhere you will have clouds are you all understanding what are these called as rain bands please please understand this now first i am talking about three parts i i wall rain bands fine what is an i i is the center of the cyclone where you have highest temperature lowest pressure as it has lowest pressure air from the surrounding will come towards it and as from the surrounding it comes it circulates and raises fine so it is an area of highest temperature and lowest pressure last year i think 2021 upsc asked the question i of the cyclone has 10 degree celsius less temperature than the surroundings i told you number is wrong fine so what is it 10 degree celsius higher than the surrounding fine and then guys will you have clear sky in the i yes 
whenever i comes on the land it is called landfall fine whenever i comes on the land it is called as landfall wherever landfall happens disasters will be more violent disasters happen where in the landfall area then what is i made up of which clouds i is made up of which clouds i i wall is made up of cumulonimbus cumulonimbus basically means i will tell you i never told you that you have thunderstorms and lightning but they will tell i wall is a region where thunderstorms and lightning is present is that correct yes why so guys mandatorily remember if at all they use the term cumulonimbus possibility of thunderstorms and lightning is there i'll i'll tell you a simple thing in india monsoon season monsoon season we will get stratus cumulus clouds summer season we normally get cumulonimbus clouds so can you tell me when will you have thunderstorms and lightning summer season you will have thunderstorms and lightning when you will not have monsoon season now did you hear gujarat madhya pradesh some parts of maharashtra region had hail storms many crops were damaged which clouds cumulonimbus which season summer season logic should not miss wherever four things what are the four things thunderstorm lightning cloud burst hail storms which clouds are we talking about cumulonimbus clouds do you understand rain banks can go far 150 to 300 kilometers it can go and please understand on top of i remember this you will have anti cyclonic circulation which one ma westerly jet streams are above ma yet to come to this particular part itcz will be shifting right so wherever itcz is there wherever land gets heated in all those areas convection occurs if jet stream comes on top of it then you won't get but jet stream is also not stable it also keeps on meandering ha huh. so during summer season where is your jet stream jet stream is present over ganga basin slowly it needs to shift it takes time so always remember uh, do we get rainfall throughout summer season we get in parts and that is when jet streams are not there so when jet streams are there you won't get for sure but if jet streams are there then what is sorry if jet streams are moving away then you are going to get that's why meandering of jet stream is important for us so whenever jet stream meanders when it is not there on us we get rainfall in i didn't get now see normally where is the jet stream jet stream is present in between like you know hadley cell and ferrell cell ferrell cell and polar cell we are talking about india so it is in between hadley cell and ferrell cell itcz when it is present in southern hemisphere what is going to happen jet stream will be present over middle part of india that is madhya pradesh region as itcz moves above jet stream also starts moving above it would have reached ganga basin we are talking about southern india that's why north india will not have very heavy rainfall when we talk about coffee blossoms cherry blossoms like you know mango showers and all these are in this part of the country much fine so is this clear so this cyclones conditions are one names are another one can you tell me why on the eastern side of the continents only you have cyclones guys warm currents temperature is greater than 24 to 27 
what is the depth required 60 to 77 guys rotation revolution rotation revolution radiation reflection world climate world climate cyclones i'll tell the syllabus atmosphere temperature right then you have what we call as uh, atmospheric circulation clouds are there then you have something called as like you know world climate right planetary winds seasonal winds local winds right cyclones anticyclones then what do you have like you know you have something called as uh, fronts air masses and all air masses fronts mostly associated with mains in this time don't focus on those right read once if you have time just give a glance but more focus must be there on these rotation and revolution have clarity again and again you read have clarity on that language you work see right from independence till now whenever upsc has given any question june 21st only summer solstice will happen they will change language concept doesn't change they will change language concept doesn't change reflection radiation high clouds low clouds climate forcings climate change is important that's why these words have become important what is positive what is negative go back see in uh, you know shankaraya's book or anything you see what is climate forcings which one act as positive which one act as negative that's fine then we are talking about like you know uh, cumulonimbus clouds specifically you should have clarity fine i hope you understand now thunderstorm lightning all those aspects then we spoke about cyclones and cyclones world climate one question will be there mandatorily you will have world world climate one question and then this we also saw in the morning about ir related important places these are all mandatory for you fine after this we have to talk about india geomorphology is geomorphology this this uh, year turkey is important okay turkey had earthquake so can you tell which plates converged to form earthquakes so i am not talking with respect to disaster management i am not talking with respect to how india is helping we are talking with respect to geography right so earthquakes this year read ncrt completely every line you read mercury calculation whatever is there you read earthquake high possibility question will come this year fine because of turkey now tomorrow we'll see geomorphology uh, basics are important is like rocks and all basics are important there is no doubt but based on current issues what should we focus like continental drift theory those things you don't get into much some factual things whatever is important will go through them fine no uh, indian climate india anything is important man we can't say it's not because what happens uh, there are some questions which are basics there are some questions which are advanced upsc when it comes to world they always ask basic they have never asked advanced questions when it comes to india clarity is important they will never ask you world climate basic like you know uh, they don't go to the depth because that's not affecting us tropical cyclones they go to depth you will never see a question on temperate cyclone you see from the history like you know 20 30 years you see not even one question on temperate cyclone because india is not affected by temperate cyclone much maximum what they ask you is western disturbances right so anything that affects india man el nino la nino or anything i'll tell you what you need to recollect that much is important you can't yes ma'am. we'll do that not an issue but is this clear yes see guys yeah see guys. what is a cyclone fine if you have a low pressure at the center
if you have low pressure at the center surrounded by high pressure this is called as cyclone this and what happens in a cyclone there will be converging of air so anywhere on earth if i see convergence i say it cyclonic circulation fine and if i have high pressure surrounded by low pressure and if at all wind diverges can i say high pressure at the center low pressure outside is wind diverging anywhere if i have high pressure at the center surrounded by low pressure we call it as what anti cyclone now if at all there is divergence i call it anti cyclonic circulation if at all there is convergence i will call it as what cyclonic circulation now you see this and tell me here what is happening here convergence what is it called cyclonic circulation here what is happening moving out that is called as what anti cyclonic circulation and i'll tell you what is the use of this you see what does it do is it moving outwards as it moves outwards it will suck the air it will suck the air you tell me if it sucks the air in the eye in the eye you will have more air particles or less air particles if there is less air particles do we call it low pressure or high pressure now i'll just ask you here i have 900 air particles yes. here i have 1000 air particles can i say this is high pressure this is what low pressure are you all getting the point now a simple question to you this is 1000 this is 900 now this sucked 100 it sucked that means did it become 800 if it become 800 did the difference increase or decrease increase means will more air blow or less air blow more air will blow if more air blows will the speed of circulation increase or decrease increase have you heard cyclone became super cyclone low became cyclone cyclone became super cyclone how does it become super cyclone depends upon anti cyclonic circulation the more it sucks speed increases more and that leads to conversion fine so okay as you raised this have you heard about frontogenesis what is frontogenesis process of formation of fronts is called as what frontogenesis what are the two conditions for frontogenesis guys there must be two air masses of different temperature right one must be warm one must be cold second they both must move in opposite direction then you call it as what frontogenesis can you tell two conditions two air masses of different temperature moving in opposite direction that is called as what frontogenesis correct now you tell me when two air masses hit will warm air rise will it form clouds will it give rainfall yes. so guys sometimes sometimes whenever cold and warm when they are converging here i will have low pressure here i will have low pressure can i say there is converging and rising air is this a low pressure area yes this actually temperate cyclones look like this temperate cyclones look like this if i say this is 900 and if i say this is 1000 yes. pressure difference now you tell me this became 876 this is 1000 only this is 876 that means can i say it became low pressure will more wind blow or less wind blow so will the speed increase or decrease will it give more rainfall or less rainfall so yes within 24 hours if the pressure difference reduces by 
increases by pressure difference increases by 24 millibars 24 millibars then frontogenesis will become bombogenesis and gives no bombs and gives no bombs america had no bombs because of this fine is this associated with tropical cyclones or temperate cyclones temperate not associated with tropical fine fine this so we'll meet tomorrow